With Lee Adams, Todd Wiltshire and Brian Anderson, the Cheetahs have been running away with it most of the year. world champion Mark Laram and the Peterborough Panthers have come to Oxford to try and halt the march towards the Elite League title. And a warm welcome to Sandy Lane, to Oxford Stadium. The Oxford Cheetahs, top of the league at the moment, taking on the Peterborough Panthers, live here on Sky Sports in widescreen and Dolby Surround Sound. A huge crowd once again here at Oxford, high above, as you can see. Foghorn's going off just by our studio here, but a great night and a great atmosphere once again because Oxford are on top as they have been for most of the season. But tonight, Peterborough come with a very strong side trying to change all that. With me once again, the current long track champion, uh, Kelvin Tatum. And uh, Kelvin, in many ways, although Oxford have had it pretty much their own way for most of the season, they haven't actually dominated totally. They've had close matches and tonight's match should be very close. Peterborough on a roll at the moment. Yes, Peterborough are very good away from home. They've uh, had a couple of wins away from home, so they're looking strong, and they are strong on paper. Um, uh, Oxford were racing against Poole here last week and only just won the match by two points. So, you know, they were just came out of that, that by the skin of their teeth. So they are beatable, and I think that uh, Peterborough have the capabilities of doing that. When we look back to last year and we look at Eastbourne and Kingsland and the year before that, Peterborough, when they were on their roll, what's the key to a championship winning team? Because Oxford have certainly got the package, haven't they? Well, continuity between the team. And, and if a rider drops out, you need another rider to come in and start picking up where that rider's left off. And that's exactly where Oxford have been so good this season. They've been able to cover the losses. They've had one rider, Lucas Drimmel, out for some time, but they've had other guys coming in and, and scoring points. And, uh, like, and that's kept the whole thing rolling on, and that's why they're at the top of the league. Well, as you can hear, a great atmosphere right here in the crowd. It's been raining this afternoon, but I'm glad today, at the moment, it's clear anyway, but there's always a chance, I suppose. But a good, strong crowd packed in to see the Oxford Cheetahs. Let's take a look at how the Elite League table stands at the moment. Oxford at the top by three points at the moment, and the, the real key, I suppose, is the fact that matches they've only had 22, yes. compared to some teams like Paul, 26, Coventry, 23, and they haven't given up by any means at all, and Ipswich in fourth place. At the moment, Peterborough in fifth, and tonight's match could be so important, they've only had 20 matches, and if they win tonight, that could change everything for them. Certainly could. You know, Peterborough have had a, an even different start to this season. Um, a win here tonight would be quite a coup for them and really give them a sort of a kickstart towards the end of the season and get some respectability. Um, I think they were looking for a lot more from this season. Oxford have been just outstanding, and I think that uh, Paul and Coventry probably haven't given up, but uh, really and truly, Oxford are going to need to slip up a couple of times, I think, to give the other guys a chance. Tonight's other meeting, of course, Poole against Coventry, second against third. That's an important match. We'll keep you up to date with that uh, as it unfolds. And tomorrow, of course, Ipswich against Oxford. So Oxford have two big nights, really. And as you yeah. said, they can't slip up now. And tonight and tomorrow night, very important to them. Because, let's say, if they win those two matches, both tonight and tomorrow, they could be sailing away. If yeah. they don't, could all be different, couldn't they? Exactly. And, and uh, you know, the other, the other teams here are going to want them to lose. And for sure, Oxford are going to want to have that sort of bit of a comfort zone as it were, so that they can sort of almost tie the league up this week. But uh, from our point of view, we, we want to see the league go on for as long as possible. So, oh, so we always well, like we, our grandstand finishes it, like we had last season. Exactly. So we would like Peterborough to maybe put one over on Oxford tonight. All right, let's take a look at the teams as they line up tonight, starting with the Oxford Cheaters. No big problems for them. Brian Anderson, Todd Wiltshire. Martin Dugard comes in as a guest, and as a, you're going to have a guest. A guy who's ridden here for five years knows exactly what he's doing. Alice Trimble, and that's because his brother... Uh, Lucas is out, Lee Adams, Andrew Appleton, Steve Johnson, that's their team tonight. Yeah, the Danish number one, Brian Anderson riding at number one for Oxford, uh, back to full fitness and uh, showing it on the track, very consistent this year. Todd Wiltshire, another Grand Prix rider, been a little bit indifferent from Oxford, struggled here last week, but I'm sure he'll be up for it this evening. Martin Dugard there, looking very relaxed, he rode here for five seasons, knows the place very well, and a very strong guest indeed. Alice Drimmel, struggling, not struggling, but finding it a little bit more difficult in the main body of the team since coming up from reserve. Lee Adams, what can we say, always near or just about the top of the average of, of the Elite League, always a very strong performer. Andrew Appleton, a young English rider, just finding his way really at the moment. Tremendous experience to be in such a good team. Steve Johnson, the captain, slightly surprised to see him down at reserve, but that just shows you how strong this team is. Yeah, that's a very good indication of how strong they are. Let's turn our attention now to the Peterborough Panthers. And I said, they come here on a roll. They've won four of their last six matches. Ryan Sullivan flying away at the top there. 9.15 his average. Mario Gio. Matt 
Furyan comes back into the side. Sam Tazar still out with that Achilles injury. Shane Parker, Mark Laram, the world champion. Nigel Sadler and David Hamm. Yes, Ryan is going uh, really well at the moment. Started the season slowly, but is absolutely on top form at the moment uh, and in the GPs. Mario Giroud didn't start the season for Peterborough, back in the side. He knows Peterborough very well and uh, a real character. Matty Foyan was actually released by Peterborough earlier on. He's now riding for Bellevue, but guesting in this evening. Here we see Shane Parker, a good, solid performer in the middle of the team. Always the sort of guy you need in your team. Mark Loram struggling in the GPs, but we know what he's capable of. He's had a couple of guest bookings lately and got maximum, so they'll be looking for another maximum this evening. But he hasn't had a maximum for Peter. I've no, that that's amazing. Exactly. Nigel Sadler, was, it looked like he was going to be dropped at one stage, but uh, has bounced back to full form and very much part of the Peter was set up. David Howe, another young Englishman, 19 years of age. Uh, a lot of potential in this young man and uh, seems to have been around a long time already, to be honest. So those are the two teams in action tonight. And of course, we were at Peterborough just a couple of days ago, and I just wonder, that is such a different track than what we've got here, which is quite a short track. Sure. Um, how will Peterborough ride on this track? Because obviously it'll favour Oxford. It's their home track. They're unbeaten here. Well, I don't think it will be too much, uh, too difficult for riders like Ryan uh, Sullivan and Mark Loram. I think those two guys will slip in. I think the middle order riders, people like Shane Parker, Mario Giroux, those are the guys that are going to click into gear straight away, right from their first rides, if they're going to push Oxford all the way. I mentioned it had been raining earlier this afternoon. I'm glad it's now, now clear, but there are a few clouds up there. But they were watering it, what, up till 7 o'clock tonight, so... Exactly, yeah. The track is in remarkable condition. We had some very heavy showers. They were actually watering it at about 7 o'clock this evening, so um, uh, all credit to the track staff. They've coped with the weather conditions superbly, and I'm sure that we're going to see uh, a tremendous meeting this evening. See the guys, they're doing some practice starts. Looks like uh, there's plenty of grip, the front wheel's in the air there. What's the key to this part of, of, of the whole evening for them? I mean, it's the first time they've been out on the bike, obviously sure. on the track. Do you practice your starts? What do you do? Well, it, exactly that. You're practicing your starts. You don't get any practice laps before an Elite League match, so it is a way of just getting a feel for the track and your bike, just to make sure that you've got the right setup for your first heat. And are we looking in Oxford at the new champions? I think uh, very likely, Jonathan. I think, as I say, they've got such strength and depth, and they, they've just kept this tremendous continuity all through the season. They haven't had to chop and change the team too much. And there's a tremendous spirit in the camp, so uh, they're looking good. Can't overemphasize this is a very important match. It's a rescheduled match, it was rained off, but it's a big match for Peterborough because if they can win tonight, only played for 20 matches, of course, and if they do win tonight, that's 21, another few points in the bag. They're fifth at the moment. But really, in terms of the top three, or certainly top five, Peterborough are right up there, aren't they? Well, I think also psychologically, if Peterborough here win here this evening, Jonathan, then that gives hope for all the other teams, particularly the ones that are breathing down their necks. And uh, Peterborough are actually pushing Oxford extremely hard before it got rained off. So, you know, it is a case that um, uh, you know, Peterborough are more than capable of pulling off quite a surprise result here. Well, it's pretty close on paper. Let's see how the bookies sit. And, Kelvin, where would your money go if you had Well, some? I think I'm going to go for a home win. They haven't been uh, beaten at home, so I'm going to go for a four-point home win, 11 to 1. And you said you're going to give me 5p. All right. I'll, yeah, <laughs> I'll hold you down. I'll give you 5p. Come in, guys. So Steve Johnston's here of Oxford, Oxford, of course, Honda. and Ryan Sullivan here of Peter the, the two captains are here. And we've also got uh, oh, you've got 50 Martin yours, Farrow okay. of Honda, yeah, okay. who's going to do that team cost. Uh, we'll get uh, Ryan, you can, do the, you can do the call there. Throw her up. Throw her up. Heads. He's calling heads. heads and heads is. it is. So, your picks are? Um, I think we'll take one and three. One and three, okay. Good luck, mate. Let me quickly start with you. How are you guys looking? We've just been talking about the fact that the last few matches have looked pretty good for you. You guys are riding well. Yeah, I think we're really back close to full strength now. Um, we pushed them pretty hard here last time we, were, we came here. We didn't get to finish the meeting. So, um, you know, we've, we've been doing really well today everywhere. So we're looking for a good, good match. Everybody in the league, I think, wants you to win tonight because these guys have had it pretty much their own way all season. Well, that's, that's pretty well it. I think we've got everyone backing us. But, um, you know, it's going to be tough. You know, they have had an unbeaten run now for a long time. So maybe we're the team. John, I'm sure you're used to the pressure, though. Uh, how are the team feeling tonight? Yeah, the team feel really good. We've got a good guest in. Uh, Martin Dugard flies around here. You know, it's one of his favourite tracks. Um, so, like uh, like Ryan said, when they were here before, they ran us pretty close. So it'd be nice to get the meeting all done tonight and the, the full 15 heats finished and see how we go. We've been talking about your consistency as a team, and I think to win a title, as you're obviously on the way to try and do anyway, what's it all about? What's the feeling in the team? Do you feel as though you're on that roll? Yeah, we're, we're going pretty good. It seems that um, we've, we've got a good team all the way through. The team spirit's really good. When one of the guys seems to have an off meeting, someone else will pick up and have a good meeting. So that's how it's worked. We've only won a lot. We've won a lot of matches only by two or three or four points where, you know, we, we should have been a lot stronger. But like I say, when someone's had a duff one, someone's had a really good meeting. So um, 
long as we keep doing that, we're okay. No, no pressure then. Who's, whose turn is it tonight? I hope it's not mine. I don't <laughs> want to <duck> it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, thanks a lot, guys. We'll let you get back to the pits and get sorted. Nice thanks, John. But Cheers. Calvin, uh, you can learn a lot talking to the teams there. Obviously, Peterborough up for it, and you're right, the whole league probably are behind them. But uh, they are. They look like a, you know, listening to Jono, they sound as though they've got that confidence, that air of a, a team that sure. you know know that they've been winning and know that you can keep doing it. It is. It seems a, such a, a part of this uh, whole. It is, and what John, John I was saying there about you know when rider, one rider has an off night, another one steps in, and that's what I was sort of referring to early on, that that's what they've been capable of doing. I actually won the league with Coventry uh, in 88, and uh, we had that. We only won, we had about 15 last heat deciders, um, but we actually won the league undefeated, and like you were saying there, they haven't been sort of blowing teams away, but they've managed to pull out the right result every time. So, you know, that gives you that added confidence, and you have that belief that you're going to go on and win the league. All right, well, at the moment, it's nice and dry, but there are a few clouds out there, as you can see, just gathering, but hopefully not go too away, ominous. Go, yeah, go away. away. We'll blow them away, <laughs> and I'm sure that the foghorns that are here in the crowd will blow most of those clouds away. Great atmosphere here. We'll be back with the start of Heat 1 in a moment. Join us then. Oxford as the Cheetahs take on the Panthers. It's a running affair tonight and such an important match. We're saying, of course, that Oxford are favourites for that title. They've looked brilliant all season, but I tell you what, a change of that if Peterborough could win. If Peterborough could win tonight, that could change everything because remember, they've got another big match against Ipswich tomorrow night. They need that confidence to sure. go into that away match. No question about it. And they've won the toss, Ryan Sullivan on gate one. So uh, all things to play for here. As you can see, they're at the tape. So let's join Peter Collins and Tony Millar to pick up the action. In time for heat number one, a big crowd here at Sandy Lane. Looking across the starting tapes on the inside in the white helmet colours there is Ron Sullivan, the 26-year-old ex-Aussie under-21 champion. In a red, skate two, that's Brian Anderson, the 30-year-old Dane. Exactly 3,500 points he's scored so far in the British League. Gate three in yellow and black is Mario Yeru, the 24-year-old in the Continental Final at Gdansk on Sunday. On the outside, it's Todd Wiltshire, the Australian, the 32-year-old, fourth in the Grand Prix series at the moment. That's the lineup. That's heat number one. Our referee is Jim Lawrence. Our starting marshal here today is Clive Herbert. He marches away. Up by the tape, a tremendous start from the outside, but Todd Wiltshire is blocked to the man in white. It is Ron Sullivan picking it up, but coming through well, Brian Anderson on the inside. Anderson, the Dane for Oxford. The man in white, of course, is Ron Sullivan for Peterborough. He's picking up grip, Peter, and Ron Sullivan has got his line just right. Yeah, I must say, Tony, the track's in great condition after the storms we've had this afternoon. A lot of natural water. Better than the artificial water in here. Out in front, Ryan Sullivan riding the quick line wide already so early on in the meeting. Tremendous battle between Ron Sullivan and Brian Anderson for the first three quarters of the lap. But then Brian Sullivan came out of the pits, bend wide, picked up the grip, stole a march on Brian Anderson, the Danish captain, and away they went and into the final lap. It's looking set for a three-all. Unless Mario Yaru can put even more pressure on the back on Todd Wiltshire. He's doing that, as you see in your picture right now. But the man in white, that's Ron Sullivan, who's going to take that checkered flag. A tremendous ride by him. Brian Anderson in red for Oxford taking second place. Third place in blue going to Todd Wiltshire to make it a three-all for the first heat. And, well, it could hardly be tighter, of course. A great race, that. It all sorted itself out at the end of the first lap when Ron Sullivan... That man there in the white helmet colours, the 26-year-old Aussie from Adelaide, stole a march on Brian Anderson and ran away to win it ahead of Anderson and Wiltshire for a split of the points at three points all in the very first heat this here in this Elite League meeting. Well, off the starting gate, you can see the rider in white, Ryan Sullivan lifts a little bit, doesn't get it perfect really, but uh, the rider in red, Brian Anderson, turned back to the inside, thinking there was a lot of grip down there, looks as though Brian's leading that race, coming into the pit bend, a very, very brave, brave corner there from Ryan Sullivan, just look how wide he's riding so early on, on the first lap, that's very unusual. From the starting gate again, we see on the inside, the best start really, from Ryan Sullivan, in the white there, cutting back in the red helmet. Brian Anderson just couldn't get round the inside of him, but uh, 
good starting there from the Peterborough man, Ryan Sullivan, into the first bend. Well, a great ride by Ryan Sullivan, and he's now in our studio with Jonathan Green and Kelvin Tatum. Yeah, yeah it was just the start they wanted, and, uh, well, no problem finding the grip tonight, Ryan. No, actually, it, um, it was a bit strange, the track. I rode it on parade, and it, it looked different to what it actually rode. It had grip in funny places, so um, i going to probably change a little bit now. And... You've got to wait nicely off gate one, which is nice and heat one, isn't there, gate one here? Um, but you drifted wide, and Brian seemed to surprise you as you come into this uh, corner here, and you sort of give it a real good wrap around the outside and pulled it off. Yeah, I sort of knew I had to. I tried to drift because I thought there was going to be a bit more dirt up high, but um, they ripped it up, but it really didn't make anything. And uh, I sort of sat there spinning, could hear him coming underneath me, and there was nothing I could do. What will you tell the boys when you go into the pits now? Um, you know, just to take it easy, sit, sit right on the inside, I think. Just like you early did. On, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think early on you need to be down low that before the dirt, you know, it'll break up and start to move out wide, and um, I think the racing will sort of move but out. But, Ryan, actually, on. I've got to contradict you there a little bit because you actually rode quite a high line, and you seem to generate a lot of speed by doing that. Yeah, I was just trying to keep my speed up, really. I think that's okay. the best thing I was doing. I think there is more grip down low at the moment. Um, I had a couple of corners where I stayed down low, and it, it felt better. But uh, I had a bit of a break and I just tried to test the track. Okay. Well done again. We'll let you go That's back. Right. And of course, as you right. can see, they're up to tapes again. So let's join Peter Collins and Tony Millard. Heat number two, the one, of course, that features the reserves of both sides. They can only separate sheep from goats here on the inside. Andrew Appleton goes for Oxford. Gate two, Nigel Sadler, the Aussie for Peterborough. For Oxford in gate three, the Aussie from Kalgoorlie. Their captain, Steve Johnson, on the outside, 19-year-old David Howe. This is 449th elite league match for David Howe. And he goes there, pushing them round the back, but Howe's fallen back of the two Oxford riders in front. But now coming through in wide is Nigel Sadler to put the race leader, Andrew Appleton, and under some pressure. Pressure. And well, Steve Johnston is back in third place, surprisingly, and appears to have problems. Yes, great riding here, Tony, from Andrew Appleton to be out in front there. Steve Jono, the captain there. At, well, back into third place now. He's up to third place, but he's got his work cut out. He's trying to get on the inside of the rider in white, Nigel Sadler. The man in front, Andrew Appleton, 20 points in his last three meetings at home, really looking the part now, the 19-year-old from down the road at Reading. With a lap and a quarter to go, Andrew Appleton for Oxford in the red helmet colours leads his teammate and partner now, Steve Johnston, who's come through into second place. And if it stays like this, it'll be a 5-1 for the home team, Oxford. But moving with a purpose still is Nigel Sadler. Steve Johnston should hold him off there. Sadler's coming a pace, but out front, Andrew Appleton's going to win this in red. Johnston in the end in second place in blue. Third place in white goes to Nigel Sadler to make it five points to one for the home team Oxford, who now lead by eight points to four with two heats gone. A tremendous ride by the 19-year-old race winner there, Andrew Appleton in the red helmet colours. Remember, the home team Oxford wearing red and blue throughout the meeting. The visitors from Peterborough wearing white and yellow and black. Appleton winning it ahead of his teammate Steve Johnson. Nigel Sadler at Peterborough in third place. Five points to one on aggregate. It's Oxford leading 8-4. Well, that was one of the best rides I've seen here, really, from Andrew Appleton. Great start off gate one. Steve Johnson was with him on the first turn in the blue helmet. But Jono just gets pushed back a little bit there. Ends up almost here in last place, but uh, Jono really had all the work to do there. But Andrew Appleton out in front there, going so well. Off the start, that's Andrew on gate one in the red helmet. You see him drop that clutch there. So determined there to the first corner. Steve Johnson in the blue gets sandwiched a little bit between the Peterborough pair, Nigel uh, Sadler and David Howe, but uh, here we can see Nigel Sadler comes on the inside of Steve Johnson as he lost the place there, and Jono had such a lot of work to do to come back into second place, but when you've got your reserves going so good like this, they get a 5-1 in race two. That's good news for the home team, Oxford. Well, Andrew Appleton, fast and furious, he's done that all the way to our studio. Yeah, and when he got in here, he had a huge short roar from the crowd behind us here. He's been riding here since his debut here when he was just 15 years old, and uh, obviously riding well at the moment. That was good, good heat for you. Yeah, I was lucky to make a good start, you know, and control the race from the front, but uh, it's going to be a bit choppy tonight. It's a bit choppy coming into this bend here. Yeah. Um, I was to say, I was just lucky to get a good start. Well, you held your composure the whole race, though, you know, because it's, it was quite a pressurised race, wasn't it? And when, yeah. like, when you're at your stage of your career and you hit the front, you know, all of a sudden, crikey, I've got four laps to do now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've been going pretty well lately at Oxford here. And I've been coming from the back in some meetings, but um, All right. as I say, I'm just getting my confidence up now and uh, I'm going pretty good. Is it tough to be in a team that, that you know are obviously heading towards that championship and are right at the top all the time? Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. 
you know, because being dragged along to the top boys and all that. But uh, yeah, it's good, it's going good at the moment. Well, you're holding your own, that's for sure. Let you get back to the pits okay, and do right. it. Well done, Andrew. Andrew. Well done good again. Ride. And let's get back now as we pick up the third heat now with Peter and Tony. Yes, it is heat number three we're coming up for. We said that heat two, the reserves heat, could be decisive. The 5 1 to the home reserves of Oxford could tell all that. But now in heat number three, of course, we move on with guest riders for both teams here. In red for Oxford is Martin Dugard. The man in white is Matty Burian, the 24 year old Slovenian. His partner in yellow is Shane Park, already up at takes there. A chance to look at the lineup across the takes. Matty Burian in uh, in uh, white goes for Peterborough for the inside. It's Alice Drimmel going for Oxford Gate 2 in blue, the 21 year old Czech World Cup rider. It's starting to rain here, so the meeting under pressure. Jim Lawrence, our referee, trying to get things going. For Peterborough Gate 3 there is Shane Parker, the Aussie Martin Dugard, the guest rider and Eastbourne captain, goes in red for Oxford from the outside. But, uh, looking out from our commentary position up above the starting line here, I don't think the rain's going to be too much, PC. No, it's just showers, Tony. We've had some torrential showers this afternoon, and that's done the track really well. Here we go, race three. Yeah, it's heat three. Away goes our starting marshal. That's my Herbert. Trying to keep it down. In the end, Alice Trimble does that. Marty Dugard, who rode here for five seasons, round the outside. The Oxford pairing in front and in control and set for a 5-1. Dugard in the red helmet covers, but down goes Alice Trimble. And that will give Peterborough a share of the points. He will get off the track. He overcooked it indeed. Did Alice Trimble on that to leave Marty Dugard a battle on his own? Yeah, strange one from Alice Trimble there. He didn't seem to be in much trouble. Just went down onto the knee and slid off. But out in front, Martin Dugard. He rode here for five years during the 80s and there. Really good times when they won the league here. And he's such a good man around this circuit. Knows it so well. But he's coming under a bit of pressure, really, from the rider in yellow there. Shane Parker. Yes, the 31-year-old uh, from Adelaide, Shane Parker, now putting Martin Dugard under pressure. Way back in white is Matty Furian. A shade disappointing, the current Bellevue rider who started the season with Peterborough. But Martin Dugard, in the end, hitting the bumps at the top end of the pits bend. But in the end, taking the chequered flag ahead of Shane Parker in yellow, Matty Furian in white. That's a share of the points for the second time in three heats, which means that the home team Oxford lead by... 11 points to seven with three gone, and Martin Dugard, their guest rider, has done everything they could have asked of a former man who raced here for the Oxford Cheaters for five seasons, and he's back on the winning trail for them. There in the red helmet colour, taking three race points. Shane Parker of Peterborough in second place, two, Matty Foyan of Peterborough, his teammate, third with one somewhat fortuitously after the fall involving Alice Trip. There's a lot of grip off the starts here, but from the outside start position, Martin Dugard does a real good start right across Shane Parker's front wheel, but right with him there, Alice Drimmel in second place, and Alice looked really quick on this first lap. It looked as though Alice was going to follow his teammate round there for the 5-1 for Oxford, but he just seemed to just lose it there on the pit turn, just let the bike slide away from him. He looked back at the opposition, made sure no one was going to run into him, but uh, quite a simple slide off there just gets a little bit too much grip in one place, then hits a slippery patch, and down he goes. Martin Dugard, Peter, really had it pretty easy from then on, didn't he? Certainly did, here he is, over the finish, three points for him. So, Martin Dugard making the crowd happy here at Oxford, of course. Tonight he's riding for Oxford, he rides against them occasionally for Eastbourne as we move on now to heat number four. Our referee, Jim Lawrence, Looking out at the uh, clouds, see, I think the rain has actually uh, ceased at the moment here, but uh, Jim Lawrence just uh, a few feet along from us here, high up in the above the stand here. And uh, as we move on to heat number four, it features that man in white, Mark Larab, of course, we've seen many, many times before. The current world champion, of course, disappointingly, 12th in the Grand Prix standings this year. He gave some thrills in Speedway's World Cup. Who'd forget uh, that uh, Thursday night? But uh, disappointment in the end for Britain the British Lions in that, but in white, Mark Moran, 12th in the Grand Prix Series, but he's up against Lee Adams in this one, Lee Adams, the rider in red, already up at takes there, and Lee Adams, and we know his capabilities, he's 5th in the Grand Prix Series, he's had 63 maxima in his British League career, and well, from his point of view, Peter, Lee Adams a great favourite since moving here from Kings Lynn. Yeah, Mark Laram's the world champion, but certainly the best man in the league at the moment is Lee Adams, both riding for uh, the Owen Brothers team in the Grand Prix. Well, a chance to look at the lineup because the two riders in this 
who we've already seen. David Howes, one of them. He goes on the inside for Peter Britt in yellow, the 19-year-old. Steve Johnson, the Oxford captain and reserve, goes in blue from gate two. Mark Aram, the world champion for Peterborough, goes for gate three in a white. And on the outside for Oxford, it's Lee Adams, currently second in the British Elite League averages. He's been top for a long while and what's for most of last season. But Jason Crump now tops him. Lee Adams from the outside. He's the man the Oxford fans will be looking to in this one. The sun's coming back out here. As they say, it shines on the righteous, Peter, and deep into your eyes. <laughs> yeah, the weather doesn't, uh, can't make its mind up tonight, Tony. There's no doubt about that. Heat number four, and that man, Lee Adams, the hopes of the Oxford Cheetahs fans and their league title, but he's going back. He's got a little bit of a problem, I think, now with a, a bit of condensation under his visor, Lee Adams, and that's going to upset our referee and starting marshal alike. He's back there now, the number five for Oxford. They're all at tapes now. Sun started to shine, the race definitely stopped, and our start here, Marshall moves away with a purpose. Up by the tapes, a great start on the inside from David Howe. Round the outside in red goes Lee Adams, really fast, coming through in blue. Steve Johnson, which puts Oxford one and two, but still work being done now by Mark Duran, who failed to make the start. The world champions moved into second place, and will now have to set out in pursuit of Lee Adams, the Aussie out front. And Laram is doing just that after a disappointing start. Yes, again, Mark Laram's not made a good start. It's his usual trademark. Normally overtakes riders, comes from behind, but uh, Lee Adams did all the damage on that first turn. He's got his head down, he's riding the quick line, and really Mark Laram has got uh, a massive task now to try and overtake uh, Lee Adams. If it stays like this, it'll be a fourth point to two heat advantage, making the second heat advantage of the night to the Oxford Cheetahs. Remember, Oxford, the home team, wear the red and the blue helmet colours throughout the meeting. The visitors from Peterborough, white and yellow and black. We see the man in yellow and black. Right at the back is David Howe. But now the checkered flag greets the rider in a red Lee Adams. Mark Laram takes second place for Peterborough in white. Steve Johnson, the Oxford captain, finishes third in blue to create a 4.2 margin for the home team, the Oxford Cheetahs. They now lead by 15 points to, 11, uh, to 9. And uh, certainly from their point of view, just the start they wanted, and a tremendous ride by that man, Lee Adams, taking the three race points. Mark Laram in second place, two race points. Steve Johnson, third, the first four points to two of the nine, but Adams is fast all the way. Yeah, it's very difficult, Tony, to make a good start from the outside start position, especially early on in the meeting. On the outside position, it's Lee Adams there, but just look at the way he comes across the front there of the rider in white, Mark Laram, the current world champion. But there's not a lot of room out where Lee Adams is, and he comes onto the back straight, but he's just got enough speed to grab the lead and hold on to it. But Mark Laram's already made a big move on Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson almost got up to second place there, but now Mark Laram has established that second place. Here again on the start from the outside, it's Lee Adams. Look at that, the bike gripping all the way to the first corner. One direct gear to the back wheel. One clutch, that's all that's on the bike, one gear and uh, 70 brake horsepower, single cylinder machine and it just takes off like a rocket to the first corner and he was the winner all the way, Lee Adams. Well, a great ride by Lee Adams, 15 points to nine, the Oxford Cheetahs lead. Their fans here at the stadium in Sandy Lane are pretty happy with the way things are going but the tactical substitution regulation could help for visitors Peterborough. They currently are six points behind at Oxford 15, Peterborough 9. All the remaining heats coming up after the break. Battle of the big cats tonight as Oxford Cheetahs take on the Peterborough Panthers. At the moment, Oxford are leading it 15 to 9. Beautiful evening here. Chance of rain, but thankfully it's blown away. And one man blowing them all away at the moment. Lee Adams, another great ride from him. And uh, it's looking pretty good, both on the Grand Prix scene and here at home. Yeah, had a good GP in Boyens and, uh, you know, tallied, tallied a few points up. And I think we're fifth at the moment, but uh, got a long way to go before we hit the, hit the top. You know, Tony and Thomas have uh, got some serious points there. We need, really need them to, uh, to duff out in the next couple, but... The way they're going, it's, uh, it's not going to be that way, but fingers crossed, you know, we can uh, hopefully head for the top three. It was a nice ride here, and your ride against Mark there at gate four. I was just talking to you prior to coming on there that maybe it was a good thing to get it out of the way early rather than late. I think so, you know, gate four can be a real booby prize here later on in the meeting. It's, uh, it goes very sick, it's a racing line, it's very hard to come across, and I think we've had uh, four gate fours or something, or three, three gate fours out of the four races, so 
it's good to get them out of the way. And uh, only six points up. Well, yeah, they're going to bang some tacticals, but uh, hopefully we can keep our keep our heads up. Okay. All right, well, we'll take a look at what those tacticals might be. We'll let you Thanks, get back Lee. to the pits. Thanks for talking to us, Lee. Uh, let's find out what's going on. Peter and Tony. And we move on to heat number five. Oxford leading by six points as we look at the lineup for heat five. On the inside, it's Martin Dugald, already a heat winner in red. The guest for Peter for Oxford. In gate two, Mario Giroud goes for Peterborough in yellow and black. Gate three, Alice Trimmler took a tumble. First time out for Oxford in blue. On the outside, Ron Sullivan, the only heat winner so far for Peterborough this evening, their captain. Sullivan, a key to this one, Peter. Yeah, he is. Ryan's just coming into form as Peterborough are. Peterborough have been going very well the last couple of weeks. And they're looking for a third place in the league. Uh, they probably struggled to win the league with Oxford going so well, but uh, they think they've got a good chance of being in the top three, and they mean business here tonight, Tony. There's no doubt about that. Well, they all mean business. Uh, that man there in the red helmet colour, Martin Dugard, guesting, of course. We'll see him on Saturday. We're down at Eastbourne. Eastbourne against Bellevue on Saturday night on Sky Sports. But here, heat number five. Tonight, the elite league action between league leaders Oxford and Peterborough. Away go they go on the inside, and Martin Dugard gets an absolute flyer. But look at the man around the outside. Ron Sullivan tries to get the grip, almost goes into the fence. Dugard holds him off. Sullivan will have another go on this bend. A tremendous battle here between last year's British GP winner, Martin Dugard in red, and Grand Prix rider from Australia, Ron Sullivan in white. A battle between two high-class riders. Very experienced rider, Martin Dugard. Martin's normally very, very good round the inside of the circuit, but he knows that Ryan Sullivan is going to try and come round the outside, so Martin is riding right round the middle and closing all the options down for Ryan Sullivan. Martin Dugard has said he retire at the end of the season, but when you ride like this, you wonder just why. A tremendous ride with a lap to go. He's beating a man who's in the top six riders in the world, Ron Sullivan, and Martin Dugard is stretching his lead down the back straight. Alice Dribble has pulled up already in blue, so it's going to be certainly a share of the points here, but Dugard provides his second heat victory of the night. Ron Sullivan in second place. In third place in a yellow, Mario Giroud. That's a share of the points at three all again. The third time tonight we've had a share of those points. It's 18-12 in favour of Oxford as they lead, but a tremendous ride by that man there, Martin Dugard. He may be a guest for Oxford, but he knows his place, and that's at the front. Yeah, there's no substitute for experience, Tony. Off the inside, just look at the start Martin Dugard makes. He's a complete bike length ahead before the others have even moved. But he realises there's a massive challenge on the outside from the rider in white, Ryan Sullivan. So when they come into the pit bend, now just watch Martin, he runs out wide here. Now that totally stops the challenge there of Ryan Sullivan. Ryan had another goal later on, but really Martin there off the inside, just look at that. The bike just launched itself into that first corner and uh, he got eyes in the back of his head here, Tony, because he realised that that massive challenge of Ryan Sullivan was coming round the outside and uh, really that was totally counted on the first bend there and from here on in there we see that uh, Alice Trimmel's bike's gone at the back first of all he has a fall now an engine failure not his night well not a bad night though for the race winner Martin Dugard who won that heat ahead of Ron Sullivan and Mario Giroux the Peterborough pairing three all and Martin Dugard may be a guest he's now a guest in our studio yeah he's right here I tell you what he started his career here and he hasn't looked any slower all night you're getting younger the more you go on you are well yeah the way I'm puffing I feel like 60. <laughs> It was good out there, though, and it was a tough race. Yeah, Ryan's been red hot for the last couple of months, and that, and uh, unfortunately, doesn't really show in the Grand Prix. But he's come to Eastbourne and made us look absolutely stupid, and he's got really fast bikes, and it was nice to beat him, really. But <laughs> I'm no doubt I'm going to bounce into him a couple of times <laughs> later on in the program. You actually had Gate One, which seems to be working very well, and you, you started right up against the the grass almost. Was there some fresh dirt there? Um, I was listening to the boys last week because uh, one of the other away riders started there. And I thought, well, if I'm going to beat Ryan, I'm going to pick the best spot I can. And uh, now I've used it, it means someone else can't use it, so, <laughs> so it's better for me. How are you physically? I know you're, uh, you're actually one leg short than the other now, I found out. Yeah, I've, um, I had a back problem and uh, they've realised I've got one leg short than the other. But that doesn't help me keep fit. <laughs> <laughs> but you're all right, though? You feel OK? Yeah, I'm fine now. It was just one of them things that happened and... Uh, Oh, you can't, what can I say? The track seems to be riding, you've got, to, you've got to ride up quite high to get that speed. Yeah, when you come in the turn on the slick, it's quite rough. Um, 
sort of bounce across the bumps into the dirt and that sort yeah. of drags you out the turn but it's actually quite hard work on the engines because they're revving going in yeah. and all of a sudden they're parking them in the dirt and it's, they're just dropping all their revs so it's quite a hard place on motors. Well done again Martin as you can see they're at the tapes job, it's Martin. tough at the top as Martin describes but at the moment Oxford are right there let's get back to the action with Peter and Tony. In time for heat number six, and our world champion Mark Laram we see there in this one could play a key part. He goes to the inside in white for Peterborough. Next to him, K2, Todd Wiltshire, the Australian, a disappointing ride in third place, first time out tonight. For Peterborough, Nigel Sadler, another Aussie. He goes in gate three in yellow, and on the outside, it's Brian Anderson, the Danish national captain. Quite a lineup here. Mark Laram, can he make the start, Peter? He really needs to. Well, we see it so often with Mark. He really struggles on the start. He, he just can't start consistently. He's on gate one. We've just seen Martin Dugard made a blinder from gate one. Let's see what Mark can do off that same position. Well, listening down, there seems to be somebody misfiring down below us, but, uh, well, they're all ready to start. This is heat six. Our starting module is uh, quite Herbert. He's having a few problems getting them up to tapes particularly so with Nigel Sadler. He's there now, our Starling Marshall's ready. Referee Jim Lawrence, finger on the button. Up by the tapes and Mark Laram's away this time on the inside to the apex of the bend first. And well, they're going by him on the inside in blue, Todd Wiltshire. And now on the inside in red, Brad Anderson. And that shouldn't happen to a world champion who's now coming back in style to chase Todd Wiltshire. Relegating Brad Anderson into third place. And now Mark Laram will try and cut through the inside of Todd Wiltshire. We've a race on our hands here. Yeah, Mark Laram had already done the work on the start. He'd made that start, but uh, he allowed Todd Wilcher to nip by him. A little bit of a lapse there from Mark, but now he's chasing him in the dirt on the outside. Has he got the speed to get round the outside as Wiltshire looks across and sees him? Well, Mark Laram didn't quite seem to have the speed there, but now he's coming back on the inside. He's trying outside, he's trying inside. He's got one lap to go. Mark Laram doing the chasing in white. Up the inside he goes. Through he goes. A tremendous ride by a world champion of last year. He may not be this year, but he's come back here in tremendous style to win the heat in white. Mark Laram, a tremendous ride there on that final lap ahead of Todd Wiltshire in blue, Brian Anderson in red. A share of the points, and what a battle that was, because we saw Mark Laram doing exactly the sort of thing we've seen so frequently in major meetings. He came from behind. He shouldn't have had to come from behind, because this time he made the start, Mark Laram, to win that in the end, though. All the effort on the last lap ahead of Todd Wiltshire and Brian Anderson. Three points apiece. It's now 21-15 in favour of the home team, Oxford. This meeting is very, very much alive. Yeah, doesn't Mark uh, Laram make such hard work of this? He makes a brilliant start leading into the first bend. You think that this is it for Mark, but look on the inside, sweeping through Todd Wiltshire, stops Mark in his tracks, and almost Brian Anderson got uh, Mark there, but Mark kept plugging away on the outside. This is really Mark Laram at his best. We love to see him riding like this. He was trying all the way off the start. He'd done all the hard work from gate one, but Todd Wiltshire in the blue, just look at Todd back up the inside on the outside Nigel Sadler was with him also on the first turn but there jumping front wheel lifted as he went by Matt Laram Todd Wiltshire takes the lead but he was under pressure from here on all the way from Mark Mark didn't like giving up that lead whatsoever just carried on plugging away he's so good from behind Mark he's riding so wide where the grip is and uh, certainly on the last lap he gets it all right gets the wheels together first and just has enough speed to steal that line, the fast line, away from Todd Wiltshire. Well, it took Mark Laram a long while to settle down, but when he did, he showed us Mark Laram at his very best. The meeting now has six points in it as we move on now to heat number seven. And looking at my score chart, I can tell you the difference here is that Peterborough's reserves in just in four rides between them have taken just one point. That's the third place earned by Nigel Sadler in heat number two. As we move on to heat seven now here. Lee Adams turns out in this one. Andrew Appleton, a reserve winner there in blue. On the inside in red, it's Lee Adams going for Oxford already, of course, a heat winner. Gate two for Peterborough is Matty Furrier, their guest from Bellevue, the Slovenian. Gate three in a blue is Andrew Appleton, who won the reserves, heat heat two, the 19-year-old, and just down the road at Reading, used to ride for Newport. And on the outside, that's Shane Parker from Semaphore Park near Adelaide in South Australia. He goes to the outside for Peterborough. That's the lineup. This is heat seven. I think Adams really should have this for the taking, Peter. 
Well, on form, current form, you would say Lee Adams would be the favourite to win this. A good team man, though, on the outside. Shane Parker never, never gives up. And also, we could expect big things from Matty Furian. As Darley Marshall marches away with a purpose, up by the same sort of way they go. Adams, predictably, on the inside, hugs the line, gets it right. Now the race is on in second place, but Adams has plenty of time to look back where he sees his teammate Andrew Appleton in second place. A disappointing third for Matty Furrier, tail off at the rear. Shane Parker, who might look to do better than this, but Lee Adams, the Aussie from Bildura, currently second in the British League averages, and if he gets a maximum tonight, he go back top above Jason Crump, and he'll want to do that, I'm sure. Lee Adams looking for his 64th maximum in British Speedway, is now leading this with some comfort, and the others really just making up the race. Yes, Tony, Lee Adams again out in front, as expected, but the rider behind him having a great meeting again, Andrew Appleton in second place. Now he'll get the bonus point behind his teammate, and that's just unbelievable for Andrew, because he's riding out of his skin tonight here, Tony. Well, certainly Andrew Appleton's recent form, he scored 20 points in his last three home meetings, and that certainly may be making the difference to Oxford. But this man certainly is. Lee Adams takes the chequered flag, his second race victory of the night, ahead of Andrew Appleton. In third place is Matty Furian, the Slovenian champion and Grand Prix rider. But really, that's the sort of result that the home team want, and Oxford's 5-1 there sees that they are basically leading by 26 points, to 16. Lee Adams there acknowledges the crowd and Lee Adams takes it ahead of Andrew Appleton, Matty Furian in third place and Shane Parker tailed off at the back. Disappointment for Peterborough but Oxford firmly in control and Mark Moran who's given us the race of the night is in our studio. Yeah we're getting certainly Speedway at its finest this year and obviously uh, Adams in that last one and that Great heat from you. Tell us about it. You had a great start. Unusual for you, really. But uh, on that, what happened at the end of that first corner? Well, I didn't really cover the inside or the outside. I was in no man's land there, so <laughs> just went a bit too wide, really. I just suppose explain I should have the done cameras, mate, won't you? Come one, on, tell one us or the, the truth. other. <laughs> yeah, about time. But was no, it was, he snuck by me there, and I just kept plugging away and kept doing the same move because it was working. Each lap, I get wound up, and uh, just managed to snatch it at the end. Yeah, you seem to gather momentum. As 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 uh, as the heat went on, we'll we'll watch it again now, and you can run us through it. But uh, you see, as part, part. I'd say there's little bits of grip around the inside, and I just relied on a few of them. And luckily, I just about got me wheels in line enough for uh, for him to know I was coming through. Yeah, you got close. You almost did it a lap before, didn't you, when you came out the bottom corner? That's right. Yeah, but unless, as you know, unless you get your. Uh, Will's actually in front of the other guy, you, you, you're in a no-win situation. Sure. Are you in a situation now where you want to start making some tactical manoeuvres on this? Um, for the team or me? No, well, but the team, really. Uh, well, I reckon, yeah, they must be thinking about doing something now. I just heard they're going to bring Ryan Sullivan in, so that he, uh, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, he's normally in here uh, if we get behind, so that, that seems to be the plan. OK, well, Ryan Sullivan in for David Hare, but uh, how are you feeling? Feeling good? Yeah, I mean, you know, as you know, I've had a bit of a rough run in the Grand Prix this year, so I've just got to keep riding and... Keep me chin up and then, you know, results bring confidence. Confidence brings uh, better results. I'll keep plugging at it, yeah, you've had sure. Two, you've had three GPs, obviously they've been, they haven't gone your way. What do you put that down to? Do you think that that's down to your equipment or do you think that things just haven't worked out or what? I think it's a mixture of three things, really. Uh, one is obviously me. Um, you know, with a few bad results, I'd say it knocks your confidence a bit. And with um, the World Championship this year, it's been a bit difficult for me to, to keep on a level that I was on last year you know it's always hard to to do it again and um, yeah the other two really are a percentage of bikes have been maybe made the wrong choices so not quite been happy with them no. and uh, thirdly uh, luck you know I was about to say you mentioned that last year you did have that little bit of luck of course that you I did you need that you know and um, this year it's obviously paying me back in a big way <laughs> yeah. but I could turn, turn around there's a few more Grand Prix yeah you've right. got uh, Czechoslovakia where you rode so well last year you you came within half a wheel of winning it there last year you know that's an opportunity surely for you now to to really come back strong there and, 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 and win. You're more than capable of winning there. Well, that's right. You know, I mean, the pressure's off now. You know, I'm not going to obviously win it this year. And I've just got to now, you know, save me, well, for my own pride, really, sure. go and show them what I can do. And yeah. all I can do is go out there and do my best. And that's what I'll be doing. Come on. Come on. We're all right behind you. <laughs> anyway, there okay, you are. I'm just going to go and win this one. Yeah, we'll let you get back to the pits. Good job. All right, we're going to take a short break, and as you said, uh, tactical manoeuvres now. Ryan Sullivan coming into the next heat for David Howe. We'll take a short break, though. We'll be back with the action. The Panthers are behind, but they aren't out of it yet. Back 
to Sandy Lane, the stadium here at Oxford, where we're on heat number eight, just coming up of a 15-heat British Elite League match here. A change in the lineup. We'll see Ron Sullivan coming in in the yellow helmet colours. That man there in red is Todd Wiltshire. Todd Wiltshire already has had uh, third and a second place so far, but the tactical change is brought about by Peter Brother. Our six points bowl more behind. In fact, they're ten behind. That allows them to bring in this man, Ron Sullivan, in place of their reserve, David Howe. The overall lineup: Steve Johnson, the Oxford captain, goes on the inside in a blue. Ron Sullivan, who's riding well for Peter Brother, goes in gate two as a tactical sub. Gate three, Tom Wiltshire for Oxford goes in red. And on the outside, Mario Yeru, the Czech Republic rider for Peterborough, who so far has scored just a third place, and that was caused by retirement of one of the home riders. Yeah, he takes normally the race that the tacticals uh, come in. There are no heat leaders on number ones in heat eight, so you bring your man in here hoping to win it, and that's what Peter has done here with Ryan Sullivan. Vital for Ron Sullivan in yellow to get a start here. Ron Sullivan looks at Quas, and he does. He struggles to keep it down, but now Ron Sullivan has to pick up grip behind Steve Johnston, who got an absolute flyer for Oxford. Back in last place, though, is Tom Wiltshire. He will have to battle for Oxford. The freedom of riders packing in for the disappointment. Ron Sullivan has plenty of work to do. The man in third place, Mario Yeru, faces the task of holding off Tom Wiltshire, who's trying to take him on the inside. But there's a battle out front. Yeah, when you've got Steve Johnson in the race, he's so unpredictable. He can win races, big races. He's just won the Golden Gala meeting in Italy. And uh, but Ryan Sullivan's really putting him under pressure now. Ryan's come on the inside of him, but Jono's still hanging on, Tony. A brilliant battle here between two Australians. The man in blue, Steve Johnson, from Kel Corley in Western Australia. Ron Sullivan from Adelaide is riding for Peterborough. Sullivan goes for the grip now. Half a lap to go. The man out front is Steve Johnson for Oxford. The Oxford fans are cheering. Sullivan is coming, but Johnston holds him off in blue. Sullivan in second place in yellow. Third in white is Mario Yaru for a share of the points. And real disappointment for Todd Wiltshire in red. The tactical substitution worked to some degree. It didn't, though, produce the heat winner. But with a three-all share of the points there, it's 29 and 19 at the moment with eight heats gone and seven to go. Steve Johnston for Oxford, their captain, winning that ahead of Ron Sullivan, the tactical substitute for Peterborough. The second Peterborough rider, Mario Yaru, was third. And Todd Wiltshire, a disappointing ride for him. He has been a little bit disappointing at home, but Oxford are in front, 29-19. Yes, Steve Johnson there, the saviour of Oxford. You see him off gate one. Hard race, this one with Ryan Sullivan in it. Ryan there in the yellow, lifts on the start. Now Jono just pulls to the corner ahead of him. Jono rides very, very tight round the first corner and leads by a good five metres there from Ryan Sullivan. Ryan Sullivan's got such a lot of work to do, but he just kept trying kept plugging away at the back Todd Wiltshire couldn't make much ground up whatsoever but Ryan Sullivan was chasing all the way Steve Johnson but Johnson really never looked back concentrating on making no mistakes and uh, all the time Ryan Sullivan's reeling him in he's catching catching but Jono's just on that quick line and uh, Jono just kept going right until the finish but it was certainly close by the end Steve Johnson did everything required of him for well, that three points. While well, the triumph of Oxford captain Steve Johnson is in our studio with Kelvin Collins. Yeah, he said he's still out of breath. I'm not surprised. What a great race that was. Uh, we've had an excellent evening so far. Well done. Yeah, it's been all right. We've still got a uh, can't relax yet. But, um, yeah, it's going all right. It's going good for the cheaters. You had a nice start off gate one there. Ryan put you under a lot of pressure, but uh, you held your own there. To be fair, uh, two of the guys on the team, Martin and Lee, both came up to me and said uh, they went out of a certain groove and said, get your back wheel in there and point it in a straight line and you'll be right. And I did exactly what they said and it just shot out. So... We won't well, tell the other team, don't we? No, well, that's why I said I said it through. I wasn't going to tell you where on day one, but just in case they're watching in the pits or someone's got a two-way or something. But, no, it worked really good. Listen, what about your own form? Intercont Intercontinental uh, final coming up for you and at your Swedish home track. Yeah, um, it's, it's my Swedish home track, but I um, I haven't done a meeting there this year. I've oh, right. done all the away matches for But you know it, though, yeah. I know the track well, and I've um, got a couple of good mechanics in the town. I've got good facilities in the town. I've got bikes good enough to do it. It's just down to me. I sort of... I'm not 100% confident because I've been having a really good meeting and then a bad meeting, so I'm um, going there trying my best, but I'm not sort of at the moment on top form. Well, let's hope it's right on the night. Best of luck in that one coming up. And of course, no worries, best of luck Steve. night. See you later on. At the tapes they are again, so let's join Peter and Tony to pick up the action again. Heat number nine. We've had no stoppage so far. Every heat 
is uh, following the other with a vengeance here. And his trim will go to the inside. Disappointing night for him, Salfo failed first time out, retired second time out. Mark Loran, who gave us that tremendous race last time out for him, goes from Kate 2 in white for Peterborough. The guest, Martin Dugard, so far two rides, two wins for his adopted team for the night, Oxford here. And uh, on the outside, that's Nigel Sadler going up for Peterborough in yellow. Yeah, I think we'll see some fireworks here, Tony, between uh, Martin Dugard and Mark Laram. The place here on the starting gate, off two and three, next to one another. And Mark, as we know, not renowned as the best starter. And Martin can always pull something out of the bag. So we could have a great race on our hands here. Heat number nine, then. Here they go. On the inside in blue, it's Alice Trimble kicks it down, but Martin Dugard to the front, the guest from Eastbourne, and Brown the outside picking up grip, a surprise right that from Nigel Sandler in yellow, but Mark Laram once again, typical of the world champion in the white helmet colour, has got to do it all the way from the back, and I don't think he's fast enough to catch Martin Dugard. No, I don't think he can give Martin Dugard such a large start, but... Uh... He's also got his teammates ahead of him now, Nigel Sadler. He won't be one of, he doesn't want to be too hard on Nigel because Nigel's got two points in the back here. So Mark really's got to be careful, but he's got his work cut out really to catch Martin Dugard. Oh, tremendous there! Oh, Mark Laram lost that on the bend. There was a misfiring from his motor. He cannoned into Nigel Sadler. The referee could be nothing but stop that. Surely Mark Laram's at fault. Nigel Sadler would be put back in. That's not exactly what Peterborough want. But Mark Laram lost it completely, and I think, Peter, he lost some power there. Tony, here's me saying that uh, Mark Laram was going to be a bit kind on his teammate, and he absolutely flattened him there, didn't he, Tony? But really, Mark had that misfire, causing him problems. Yes, Mark Laram has been excluded, and, um, you know, they're both down on the track here, but I think they're both OK. Well, the referee has made the decision I predicted. Mark Laram there, who looks in some discomfort, has been excluded. The referee stopping the race in the interest of safety. Mark Laram excluded for the rerun. We can see it again with Peter Collins. Yeah, on the inside, look at Mark Laram. His bike's misfiring, but he hits some grip on the inside there and runs right into the side of his teammate. And to be honest, Tony, they're so fortunate to get away with that because the way they held onto the bikes until the last minute, they didn't particularly go into the fence so hard. They both got it down pretty well, and that's so fortunate that that safety fence did its job properly. And uh, Mark's actually holding his leg pretty badly, but you can see Mark just lifted, ran straight into his teammate, flicked up in the air, but pretty really nasty stuff. Legs and arms everywhere there, Tony. Well, I heard the motor misfiring, Peter, but I'm not quite sure why that should be the result. Well, you know, Mark, if it was misfiring, that would cause it to get a little bit of extra grip in the wrong place, and that certainly uh, would do that sort of thing. But there they are, walking away. Great to see that. Well, Lee Adams is in our studio with Jonathan Green and Kelvin Tatum. Yeah, the boys with me here didn't hear any misfire, obviously, but you saw it very closely, guys. What did you make of it, first of all, Lee? Well, I think Mark just spun it around the line and, uh, you know, just picked up a bit of grip. I don't know where he got that from, but... Uh, you know, he just stood it up and they were really lucky, you know, they sort of, that's one of those, the worst case scenario crashes, just riding it straight into the fence. But uh, I don't know, they managed to just get tangled up and slow their speed down and uh, and just fall in a heap. So, you know, to be honest, got away with it. Yeah, that's I, the main to be thing. honest, I think if that had been any other rider, that would have been a lot worse. Mark Loram is probably one of the most naturally gifted motorcyclists around and he was able to sort of half control it and right. sort of restrict the damage as much as possible. Well, the first that, thing you said to me was that could have been so much worse. Yeah, definitely. You know, one of those cases is just, just terrible. As, as, as um, Kelvin said, I think Mark controlled the wheelie. You know, a lot of other guys probably just would have flicked the bike away and right. it could have been real nasty. But uh, Let's take a look at it again. Well, the way I read it is that Mark sort of got the bike really crossed up. The bike seems to be quite flat. It's hooked up once and then it's sort of done it again. And uh, here we see it here from the inside. And any minute now, he's going to stand it up. It goes straight across into the front of Nigel Salader and sort of think buck, bucks again. Exactly. He's very lucky where it stood up in the second case. He sort of just managed to do, to put it down. Um, there we go. What a terrible pretty, feeling pretty that pretty is, though, right. Louis. Oh, it's, it's the absolute worst, you know, especially if you get wiped out, somebody comes through and takes your front wheel away. I'm guessing that when you guys were growing up, when you were kids learning Speedway, that's, that sort of thing might have happened a lot. But it's the one thing that you're obviously trying to make sure that doesn't happen when you're at this level. Well, I think it just, you know, just for, for Shane's case, you know, he's sitting there, brosy on the outside, just getting a really nice run, and suddenly there's a bike in front of you, your own teammate. But uh, you know, Nigel. It's, 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 oh, was it? Was it Nigel? <laughs> Nigel sorry, yeah. I thought it was Shane. But uh, no, it's good to see oh, both of them get on, up and walk away. But no, it's it, it is one of those scenarios where 
if you're riding and, and you're perfectly in control and all of a sudden out of left field somebody hits you mm. totally out, out you know and you're not ex expecting it mentally it's quite quite tough to deal with that we, well we had you know mark in here a few minutes ago and i just sure. wonder you know his attitude you know because of the grand prix he's not been going so well and it looks like it might be trying too hard tonight mate was that a case that could have been that as well i think it's tough for mark at the moment you know he's not on top form he's not hitting the starts we very rarely see him in fresh air out front and when you're in traffic all the time, unfortunately, there will be times, Lee, when, when you get in the wrong place at the wrong time. I guess it's going to get to you. He's had a pretty rough year, probably a lot of pressure on him, you know, first English world champion for a long time. And, uh, you know, I think he's found the found the going pretty tough. And maybe you couldn't say that was overriding. He was just in no. there trying. But, uh, no. you know, obviously he's got to look at his equipment. He's probably trying a lot of different things to get back on the pace. And uh, maybe just the certain things aren't working. Peter Brunel obviously got a lot of problems they got to sort out. They've got bikes to fix, they've got guys to fix, and uh, they're a long way behind in points. Well, yeah, they've lost Mark Lorham out of this race for sure. They've ex the referees excluded him, so, you know, they're 10 points down. They're really up against it tonight, and uh, yeah, you boys in Oxford have... <laughs> yeah, we're, well, we're smiling well. a little yeah. bit, but... Uh, we're changing D Nigel's wheel right now. Well, yeah, there's, there could well have been a footrest or a handlebar gone in there, and some of the spokes will have been uh, pulled out of the way. Also, also the, the rear mudguard there was being professionally realigned. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the proverbial good, kick. It, it looks like wank a, with his right boot. It but looks like they're going for another front wheel, so. Yeah, quite often the uh, footrests will go in there. The spokes are quite weak, really, and uh, the uh, the front wheel is only really a little bit stronger than a bicycle wheel, and it will be get battled quite uh, quite easily. But I, I just think they're really lucky to get up from that one. It's, it's good to see, and uh, let's hope they can ride on and have a good match. What about the conditions out there at the moment? How are they changing a little bit? I think they're pretty normal. You know, it's um, I feel as though it's, it's been like this pretty consistent all year and uh, you know the dirt's working good up, the, up on the high line but I think pretty much pretty soon it's going to run away it's going to be too high and you're going to have to run down the pole line and uh, you know the, Ryan Sullivan's got some speed up on up on the high line so how about, how about that maximum for you well let's hope so it'd be nice wouldn't it put you it? to the top of the average there's no pressure from us though <laughs> no well you know we just uh, do our best uh, Tight match As there. you can see, seven heats have gone, and it's pool 20, Coventry 22. A significant score to that. You'll be looking at that one very closely, the result of that one, anyway. Yeah, I think both those teams are pretty much uh, challenge, challenging us for the uh, for the top spot. So, you know, I don't know which way it's we, we want it to go, but obviously pool losing would be good. So yeah, I've got to say, whoever wins that one, probably going to be your biggest challenge, with, uh, probably with Ipswich. Without a doubt, yeah, definitely. Talking about this track, before the start of the meeting, we saw um, Colin actually go out on the track and actually scrape the outside of the track up. Um, is, that, is that a good thing? Because in previous years gone by, they never used to do that. Uh, and you were saying that that you can use the dirt now, but it may well all be gone. Is that sort of encouraging the outside line too early? I think it's sort of, uh, it's pretty much pretend grip, you know. It's sort of, uh, <laughs> it's there for a bit, it's ripped and, and it just blows away pretty quick. But, sure. uh, you know, tonight it is working pretty good. The boys are running fairly high, but uh, mm. as I say, I think it will just get to a stage where you're just, you're just running too high and the guys can spin around the inside, you know, just as quick. Well, obviously, we've got a delay at the moment while they fix the fence that uh, Mark Laram and Nigel Sadler pulverised almost. But uh, yeah. luckily, they're OK. A little bit of a limp for Mark Laram, but And they're just brushing themselves down. And well, that's just, good to uh, see, Jonathan, yeah. that he's back on his feet because that could have been very nasty for him. And I think the safety fence here has been improved dramatically over the last uh, few seasons. And it's uh, good to see him back on his bike. And uh, he's sort of like they've replaced the front wheel. And... And this could prove to be a very important heat, obviously. Well, a lot of pressure on him. Out. Yeah, without a doubt, we're ten points up, and uh, you know if we can we can lob a five-one here, they're definitely going to be on the back foot. So, uh, fingers crossed. Okay, thanks. We'll Lee. get back to the pits. Thanks, Lee Adams. Yep, as he says, fingers crossed. And there's no real need because Oxford so far have got this one in the bag uh, at the yeah. moment, anyway. So it's Peterborough that are doing the struggling. Sure. Well, they're obviously still fixing the fence there, Jonathan. They just stopped Nigel from going out on the track too early. They've obviously had to replace uh, one of the supports behind the fence and then a uh, new kickboard and such. But uh, as I say, the, the safety fence at this track has been improved dramatically. I remember having a crash here in the late 80s and hitting a solid uh, ang angle line in, in the, coming out of that corner and uh, feeling very second-hand laying in hospital with some concussion. Yeah, but, sure. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it is, you know, one of those instances where, you know, we're racing speedway, we don't have brakes. You saw the, the situation there where Mark lost control, the bike accelerated right across the track, and as a rider, you're out of control, and then he did so well to, mm -hmm. to limit the damage. 
But uh, Sadler, Sadler will feel, you know, right now, he'll feel a bit shaken, but to be honest, the best thing he can do is to get back out and race straight away. Yeah. It's a bit like if you fall off your push bike when yeah, you're yeah. a kid. Yeah. You know, your dad's going to jump you back on it. Go on, son, away you go. They get, do that, don't they? They do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But well, we thank them for it later. <laughs> <laughs> but, Thanks, Dad. Uh, you know, but uh, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll want to get this race back under, the, under his belt and hopefully nick a few points. One thing that is obvious, we haven't been here that many times this season, but one thing that is being shown tonight is why Oxford are the so consistent and why they're at the top of the league. Well, you saw, uh, you know, Steve Johnson there and he ate. He went out and beat the number one from Ryan Sullivan, the tactical substitute, and that just shows you the strength they've got in depth. Well, as you can see, Sadler is back out. Mark Laram is still licking his wounds. A bad crash indeed when things were looking not too bad really for Peterborough, but now they've got a long, long, long way to catch up. The title championship chasers, Oxford Cheaters, leading the way here at home again. Yet to be beaten here, and another match tomorrow against Ipswich away. This one they want in the bag, and they want it early in the bag. And we're about to get underway again in this one. But uh, Sadler back up to the tapes. The other riders not yet. No, he obviously wants to get up there nice and early and sort himself out. As Ellis Drimmel, been slightly disappointing this evening. He fell off in his first ride and don't really know why. Just seen a silly mistake. Sorry. Got some news on his brother Lucas. Obviously, he's got tendon problems and yeah. knee problems. He's actually going to have a skid round tonight after this match. And okay. they hopefully, not by tomorrow, but they hope he's going to be back by next week. So, important news for Oxford. Yeah, and he's got the under 21 World Championship coming up at Peterborough soon and he'll want to have one or two matches under his belt before he goes into that meeting. Absolutely. Well, as you can see, the riders are all on the track, so let's get down to the action once again with Peter and Tony. Where Nigel Sadler, on his own, takes on Martin Dugard and Alice Dribble. That's Martin Dugard. Nigel Sadler enjoying, I was going to say, his 100th Elite League, League match tonight. Well, to be crashed into by the world champion, I suppose that's some compensation. Alice Dribble on the inside for Oxford in blue, excluded Mark Moran, we see there. Martin Dugard goes the guest in a red for Oxford. On the outside, it's the unfortunate Nigel Sadler, new wheel, straightened up machine and much more. Interested to hear Kelvin Tatum talk about getting back on your bike, Peter, after falling off it. Would you do that? Well, we'll just have to see whether Nigel's really fired up with it now because uh, he took a hell of a crash there, a bit of a knock. But uh, it's going to be a little bit easier probably for Martin Dugard not having uh, the world champion, Mark Laram, next to him on the starting gate. Well, I think a 5-1 might be the order of the day here. Remember, already Oxford lead by 29 points to 19, a 10-point lead. And if they get a 5-1 here, 14 points, surely insurmountable for Peterborough. The thing's being told at reserve. The Peterborough reserves have just one point between them so far. Well, those from Oxford, Andrew Appleton already have paid maximum from his two rides. And Steve Thompson not far behind. He's already paid seven from his three. This is heat number nine. Away goes our starting marshal, Clive Helmer. Martin Dugan again to the four. Nigel Sadler around the outside, riding somewhat gingerly. On the inside, it's Alice Dribble in blue. Dribble and Dugard, Dugard and Dribble out front, looking like a 5-1 to Oxford, but Sadler starting to get his confidence back now and picking up speed, going where it's really deep, trying to take on Dribble, he won't catch Dugard, a bit of team riding now, but he goes round the outside, he will put them under pressure, but Dugard's comfortable out front, and it's looking all the way Oxford in this one. Yeah, Nigel Sadler's dropping back a little bit now, the big race really is between him and Alice Dribble, because the way Martin Dugard's riding tonight, I don't think anyone's going to touch him, unbelievable stuff from Martin. Well, Martin Dugan has said before, set for retirement at the end of this season, but looking a world-class rider in this one tonight. And Martin Dugan with a lap to go, his teammate and partner, Alice Dremel, set for his first points of the evening. Remember, Dremel already fell first time out, retired second time out. He's going to get paid three for this in second place. But Martin Dugan in red, the guest will profit from this because it's his third successive heat victory of the night. In second place, his teammate, Alice Dremel. Nigel Sadler, the unfortunate victim of that crash with Mark Moran, is the man who gets the consolation third place, but the five points to one margin in favour of the home team, their third one of that margin tonight, takes them well and truly in front by 34 points to 20. A great ride by Martin Dugard, a tremendous ride, his third win of the night for Martin Dugard. Well, Nigel Sadler, I think, was a little bit detuned after that uh, incident. On the outside start position, Nigel doesn't make the best of starts really. Again, going into the first corner, it's Martin Dugard looking so dominant, completely in command on that first corner. Covers the inside and the outside, allows his teammate Alice Dremel to ride the inside. But we had quite a challenge early on here from Nigel Sadler on the first lap. But uh, from here on, really, it was the Oxford pair all the way for a 5 1. Well, a tremendous race again, with nine heats gone, Oxford well and truly in control with that 5-1.
Martin Dugard, well and truly in charge. Three rides, three wins as a guest. You can't expect much more from any guest rider in getting so far from Martin Dugard. He won it ahead of his teammate, Alice Drimmel. Nigel Sadler, the unfortunate victim of that collision with Mark Thoran, gets a consolation point for the 5-1, sees Oxford 14 in front. And the big crowd, most of them from Oxford, they travelled here. There was a massive queue to get in early on. And they're certainly enjoying their night and look set for a world title. The sun is going down, but the Oxford fans are enjoying it, Peter. Yeah, they are. I mean, we've been having some great crowds this year at the Speedway. They had a great crowd here last week against Poole. But I know a lot of the tracks, the crowds are up. We're having some great racing, some great Speedway, and uh, especially enjoying a lot of Sky's coverage as well. Well, this track is certainly helping some great speedway, Peter. A good track here tonight. It is. Colin Meredith does the track here. He's so good with the track. I know he did a lot of work on the Cardiff track uh, for the British GP, and uh, he's one of the experts on uh, track maintenance. Well, Colin Meredith, a busy man here. Todd Wiltshire it is that goes from the inside in blue for Oxford in this one. Gate two in yellow for Peterborough is Shane Barker. Gate three is Brian Anderson, the Danish captain. And on the outside, that's Matty Furian going in a white. Matty, the guest rider operating for Peter Britton. And dare I say it, well, if they swap guests the way Martin Dugard's going, Peter, well, it could have been a very, very different meeting. Yeah, certainly a good choice of guest in Martin Dugard uh, with all his experience here. He's just showing everybody the way around. It's great to see that. Well, if you're racing against Matty Furian at Eastbourne Saturday when we uh, show you Eastbourne against Bellevue, Martin, of course, the Eastbourne captain, Matty Furian in the Bellevue lineup. Oxford against Peterborough here tonight. Oxford, are they league champions elect here in the Elite League? Our Sally Marshall struggling to get them into line. Todd Wilt to the last one coming up on the inside. Up on the outside is Matty Furian. Crowd many of them inside behind glass here in this well-appointed stadium in Oxford. A great start here for the man in blue. Todd Wiltshire, so disappointing last time, making no mistake this time. And now going up on the outside, Matty Furian in pursuit. Back in third place in yellow is Shane Parker. Tailed off at the rear, Brian Anderson is struggling in this one. And Peter Rook could get a share of the points here. But the man out front, Todd Wiltshire, is going to take some catching. Yeah, at the moment, Tony, the Peterborough boys here in second and third place. They're doing a great bit of team riding to hold Brian Anderson at the back. Brian's still in fourth place, but out in front, it's Todd Wiltshire. With two laps to go, Matty Fine is putting some pressure now on Todd Wiltshire out front, but he got caught up there in the shale, being thrown out from the back of the machine of Todd Wiltshire there. At the moment, it looks set for a three-all, but the man in red there, Brian Anderson, is now putting some pressure on Shane Parker as they go into the final lap here. Tremendous racing. Remember, the home team, Oxford, wear the red and the blue helmet colours. The visitors from Peterborough, white and yellow and black throughout the meeting. And it's going to be the blue helmet colour of Tom Wiltshire that wins this one for Oxford. In second place in white is Matty Furian. Third in yellow is Shane Parker for Peterborough. That makes a share of the points at three all, and it means that Oxford are in control, leading 37 23 with 10 heats gone and five to go. And a tremendous ride for his first heat win of the night for that man, Todd Wiltshire, the flyer from Sydney, of course, who we see regularly in the World Cup. Matty Furian for Peterborough getting second place in there in white, his best ride of the night, Shane Parker, his teammate from Adelaide in third place in yellow. Disappointment for Brian Anderson at the back. Yes, Todd Wiltshire, up until now, wasn't so consistent here tonight, but off that gate one start position, you can see he's so low there, so close to the inside curb. Todd Wiltshire in the blue helmet, nice first corner, rides so tight round the inside. And look at the lead he's got already onto the back straight, but the Peterborough pair here, they rode a very, very good race, really, to hang on to those three points. They had to keep Brian Anderson behind them. The rider in white, uh, white there, Matty Furian, looking for his teammate. Good team riding again. Here we are, off the start, on the inside, Todd Wiltshire. Oh, what a craftsman he is onto that first bend from the start. Just holds it nice and tight, looks across. A good win there for Todd. Well, certainly a good win. Oxford in charge here and leading by 14 points. Good night's racing, but it looks as if the meeting belongs to Oxford. Kelvin and Jonathan Green, what about that? Yeah, Tony, you've summed it up pretty much. I don't think there's any real way back for the Panthers, and you have to say now at this point that, you know, Oxford looking unstoppable. But uh, it's been great racing. It hasn't been dull, has it? Oh, no. You know, <laughs> we saw a superb ride from Mark Lorham earlier on. Ryan Sullivan's heat one was, you know, top draw stuff. So, you know, it isn't the case of Peterborough just being a poor effort tonight. They're giving their all. 
I think they've just come up against a side that have been very inspired and we're seeing the reason why they're at the top of the league. And the other thing is, in a couple of weeks' time, we're going back and we're going to be at Peterborough. So Peterborough will want to at least keep this close tonight. Uh, That's right. They want to get that bonus point. Exactly. You've got the bonus point at stake, so they won't want it to Oxford to win by too many points because they'll feel that there is an opportunity. Because they'll feel confident at home, won't they? Oh, certainly. You know, and it's a much faster, much bigger track that will suit them. Um, but, uh, you know, I still... I think that I actually... Actually, in conjunction with our producer, Rory Hopkins, uh, said that Oxford looked a very good side at the beginning of the season and uh, was very surprised when Paul came out at the beginning of the season and was surprising everybody because they'd written them off. Um, but now we're seeing uh, this tremendous, solid performance from a team and uh, they're on a roll, and uh, I think that they're going to have to run into some serious problems, really, for another team. Yeah, Ipswich are going to be watching closely tomorrow, because, of course, they're riding against them tomorrow night. Yeah, they are, and uh, in this sort of form, and the injuries that uh, Ipswich have had, I, I wouldn't uh, be surprised if Oxford go tomorrow night and, and win there as well. But All right. uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and they've got Greg Hancock riding for them tomorrow night as okay, well. Okay, so. well, no mean feat there. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Greg riding well as well. Let's take a short break. We'll be back with more of the action from Oxford in a moment. of the Sky Sports Elite League Speedway. Oxford 37, Peterborough 23. So far, Oxford well in charge of this one. And it hasn't been a close match, but it's been some great racing. And the Elite League, once again, turning out some huge and superb racing. And the Premier League as well. But it's been a great season. We had a superb World Cup. The Grand Prix's going well. What about that Millennium Stadium at Cardiff? And the last one at Voyens. That was pretty impressive. Let's take a look now at what happened in the A final. We join Heat 24, the grand final here, the Danish Grand Prix in Boyens. That man, Thomas Golub, a vast following of poles among the 15,000 crowd here in Boyens. Remember, Tony Ricardson went into this meeting two points behind Thomas Golub in the Grand Prix series. Golub on 43, Ricardson on 41. Already Todd Wiltshire's effort in the consolation final has taken him on to 42. Jason Crump goes into this with 25 points, a minimum, of course, of 16 he gets from this. 20 points is the Lee Adams total going into the Grand Prix. He gets a minimum of 16 if he comes last in this heat. Peter, well, four men, good and true. Can this man, Lee Adams in blue, win his first ever Grand Prix? Could do, Tony, but I think I will put my money here on Jason Crump. Jason's got gate three, and uh, Thomas Golov on the outside, that isn't the best gate, so Jason could just have a good clear run round the first corner because Tony Rickardson, if he makes the start off gate one, he's still got to turn very, very sharp, so we could see some really good manoeuvres from the outside riders, uh, certainly uh, Jason Crump. Tony Ricardson has won seven Grand Prix. Thomas Golob has won six. Jason Crum has won two. Lee Adams yet to win one. Thomas Golob tonight, three rides, three second places. Can he make it first in the final race? Away they go. On the inside, Ricardson. Golob is locked out but comes back on the inside. Now the battle is joined. The man in white is Jason Crump picking it up with real speed. But look at the battle. Ricardson in red. Crump in white. Golob at the back in yellow. Oh, what a race we have here in third place in blue at the moment is Lee Adams but Jason Crump is certainly going to put the cat among the pigeons if he can do it but Rickardson is stretching his lead. I think Tony Rickardson's done everything now that he needed to do. He annihilated Jason on the first turn. He made just a classic first corner. Jason Crump now in second place was riding a little bit too wide on the first turn but Lee Adams back in third place. He's also out of it. Wow, this man, Tony Ricardson, what a rider he is. Three times a world champion. Could he be world champion number four? This victory here will take him well and truly in front in the Grand Prix series. He will jump above Thomas Golov because Golov is struggling in the back. But Tony Ricardson greets the cheers of the speed there. Second place in white goes to Jason Crump. Third to Lee Adams in blue. And Thomas Golov's fourth place in yellow means that Golov gets just 16 points. Ricardson gets 25. Krupp, of course, gets 20. Lee Adams gets 18. The cat well and truly among the pigeons. But this man, Tony Ricardson, could he be set for another world title? He's won Grand Prix number eight. Remember, he won the British Grand Prix in Cardiff. He's won again here. Tony Rickardson, probably the best rider in the world. We've seen him the last few weeks. Didn't quite look as sharp as he has done in the past, but uh, 
tonight I've never seen him go better than that final we've just seen here he just made the start annihilated Jason Crump on the first turn and uh, again Tony is just doing everything right and now after three GPs he's sitting at the top of the table are we looking at uh, the world champion for the year 2001 Tony Another great Grand Prix for Tony Rickardson, and he rolls on two in a row for him. But remember, it's only halfway through the season in terms of Grand Prix, but look at him at the top there, 66 points. Golub still second with 59. Jason Crump, Todd Wiltshire. Lee Adams is in fifth at the moment after that brilliant third place. Nicholas Klinberg, Team Tatum, up there in sixth position. They could never have imagined that at the beginning of the season. Ryan Sullivan, Pedersen, Gustafsson, Carlson, Nielsen, and Mark Ram down in 12th. Your first podium at uh, Grand Prix level, fantastic. Yeah, it was something special. You know, I felt uh, I felt really comfortable all night. I came through the through the qualifying at the start and uh, didn't do anything stupid. A couple of seconds, put me into the main meeting and uh, just worked it from there. But uh, it's just such a shame. Tony's just so strong. I think he had four gate ones and four wins and and went home, you know, with the with the bacon, I guess. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> I just said it though. I mean, you know, we're still only halfway through the season. I mean, you're fifth at the moment. Yeah, it's not too bad. You know, we we look still looking for a top three, but uh, you know, Thomas and Tony do look strong this year, and yeah. and they got a nice little points lead, but. Uh, you know, as you say, we're halfway through. Anything can happen at Speedway. Well, it's brutal system. You know, you can only have, you can only need a one-off night in a Grand Prix, and all of a sudden. But um, uh, he's, uh, you know, you can go from being like, like top of the pile to. to Guys, I, I, we could talk, but I know you're in the next team. You're in Heat 11, so you better go. They're waiting okay. for you. Yeah, Lee's in the next one, and also as a tactical, Peter will put Mark Mark Laram back in there. So obviously not too bad now, Mark Laram. Such a good not question injured. I was going to oh, ask. Oh, sorry, as well. <laughs> but he's, he's in the next team. We can't That's talk it. to him all night. But Mark Laram is okay, and he's in this next team. Oh, so it, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, with uh, Mark Laram and uh, Ryan Sullivan in this race, Lee's up against it. So we, uh, we yeah, we totally ruined his chance of preparation for exactly. it. Exactly, he's going to have to switch his concentration on. But it's. Uh, it's an opportunity for uh, Peterborough in this race to really claw some points back. As we said before, there is a bonus point at stake when we go and see them in, later on in August. So, you know, they haven't given up uh, yet. They want to keep fighting right to the end. Yeah, there's a bit of pride at stake, really, for anybody else out there for Peterborough. And certainly Mark Laram wants to make up for that last ride. He'll probably be taking most of the blame for what happened, even though it wasn't a big mistake by him. But no. you never like to take your teammate out. Oh, absolutely not. And he'll feel, you know, he'll feel down about that. We saw him sitting there out there on the steps watching the rerun. He looked a uh, blick gum. But uh, here comes Lee. Now, pool 34, Coventry 32. A ding-dong battle between those two. That's the latest after 11 heats. So mm. that's a significant score indeed. Pool up on Coventry. Coventry still fighting. We'll keep you up to date with that. Let's get back to our action now as Lee Adams comes out to join Martin Aram at the tape. Let's join Peter and Tony, pick up the action. Wouldn't mind betting Coventry bringing Hamilton Hancock for two of the last three heats. That'll be interesting. Here, though, the action restarts. Oxford against Peterborough. Oxford in control. Lee Adams is in this one, but Martin Aram is too. Goes to the inside in yellow for Peterborough. Gate two for Oxford is Lee Adams looking for his 64th ever maximum in British Speedway. That would be enough to take him back top of the averages in the Elite League tonight. Ron Sullivan for Peterborough goes in white gate three. And Andrew Appleton, for my money, the surprise packet, who scored 20 points in his last three home meetings for Oxford, is really doing well tonight already. A paid maximum, and Andrew Appleton has yet to get a maximum, but Peterborough could do with a 5-1, Peter. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one for Andrew, though. He's got the big guns from Peterborough out with him. Ryan Sullivan and Mark Laram. It's a tall order for him to go out in this one and win. So, uh, Lee Adams there, if Lee makes a good start, we could see uh, a bit of action. Well, away they go and on the inside in yellow. Mark Laram is cut across by Lee Adams in red. Adams in front, back in third place, Ron Sullivan. Andrew Appleton tailed off and perhaps outclassed in this one. But Lee Adams, who we had in our studio a few moments ago, at the moment perhaps the form rider in the world, that podium position in Boyens, could he do even better in Prague? That in just 10 days' time. But Lee Adams in this one is going to keep Oxford in front and surely make sure they win this. There may be a share of the points, but the Rams in second place and chasing. Back in third round, Sullivan, but Appleton struggling. Yes, Tony, Lee Adams was a little bit slow getting out onto the track there. He was on the two minutes, but uh, he got to that starting gate and just went out there like a scalded cat. He's out, out in front, but Mark Laram is chasing, but I don't think Mark's going to catch him. Lee Adams, the man of the moment, in our studio, on his bike, out front, checkered flag, starting position, and he could be top of the averages again tonight. Lee Adams takes the checkered flag for the third time tonight in red.
Mark Aram in second place in yellow. Third in white, his teammate, Ron Sullivan. Three points apiece, the heat score. 40 points now to Oxford and just 26 to Peterborough with four heats to go. And a tremendous effort that by that man, Lee Adams, to produce for him his third successive heat victory of the night. And Lee Adams could be set for yet another maximum. Mark Aram second, Grant Sullivan third, and Oxford still lead by 14 points after that one. Well, Tony, off the start, in the red, gate two. Lee Adams, look at that, he just lifted that bike to the first corner. What a classic start from him, but Mark Laram's made a reasonable one in second place. Ryan Sullivan back in third. Mark Laram was trying all the way, you know, trying wide. He looks back there for Ryan Sullivan. Ryan's not really with him. He's got to go it alone. He's got to try and catch Lee Adams, but Lee was riding around the middle of the circuit. The track's just been graded. Uh, the dirt's been pulled back, so it's very fast around the middle of the track. That's exactly where Lee was riding. Watch Lee off the start, the front wheel hovered a little bit there, pulls the bike across Mark Laram, stops Mark on the first turn, holds the bike very, very tight as they come onto the back straight. There's no way through for Mark Laram, and that's how it stayed, really. What a fabulous ride there from Lee Adams. While Peter have tried everything, they've tried Ron Sullivan as a tactical substitute, Mark Laram as a tactical substitute, Neither has managed to win the heat in which they come in in that position. So the crowd here, mainly Oxford fan, of course, are enjoying this. And, uh, well, three points in the next race, and Oxford would be assured of a league victory here. Remember, the bonus point will be up for grabs when they meet again. Shane Parker is coming into this heat in place of Nigel Sadler. Obviously, uh, Nigel Sadler shaken up by that little collision it was with um, Mark Garam in his previous race. And, Disappointment for him. But Peter Collins alongside me, you've been a world champion. Mark Laram is a world champion, Peter. Do you honestly believe Mark Laram's bike is looking as fast as it should for such a rider? Uh, I think Mark's bikes are perhaps not quite working as they should do. He may need to make some few adjustments and so on. But I know this is a really busy year for Mark. There's a lot of uh, uh, people needing his time for all kinds of things. And it's very hard just to concentrate on the speedway racing. So he's got a lot on his plate at the moment. But even so, it's a great position to be in world champions only. Peter, he hasn't got to spend any time going to Buckingham Palace like you have, has he? No, I don't really know where I'm going yet, Tony. That, that'll that be very nice for me and my family. We wish you luck on that day, a wonderful day for our ex-world champion, Peter Collins. This is Heat 12 here, remember this and three more to go. Martin Dugard is the man in red. He, like uh, Lee Adams, having a great night. Martin Dugard, three wins out of three. Majority of Heat winners by a long way going the way of the home team because only two Heat winners have come from Peterborough so far in the previous 11 races. This is heat number 12. On the inside, it's Shane Parker as a tactical substitute for Peter in the face of Nigel Sattler. Martin Duvall goes there, guest from gate two in red, three wins out of three. Matty Byrne, it is the Slovenian for Peterborough in white, gate three. Steve Johnson may be a reserve, but he's the Oxford captain. That is the man on the outside, Steve Johnson. Heat number 12. Can Marty Duvall make it four out of four, Peter? Well, Marty's up gate two, but... That gate one position still working very, very well. We've got Shane Parker up in this time, but uh, Martin Dugard's out with Steve Johnson, so uh, Oxford could get a 5-1 here. Away they go once again. This is heat number 12. The referee holding his face a little bit. Line abreast into the first bend. All goes sideways at once. Matty Furrier out in pursuit. The two feet are in front. Shane Parker has stolen a march. Martin Dugard has work to do. He's hugging the white line and hugging it to good effect because he's gone right in front from third to first by hugging the line. And we thought they'd only do it from the outside. Martin Dugard in red, ahead of him, second place in yellow. Shane Parker, the tactical substitute. Back in third place now in blue is Steve Johnston. And going wide and trying to pick up space is Matty Furrier. Yeah, fabulous riding from uh, Martin Dugard out in front. He rode a completely different line to everybody else. Steve Johnson now has used that same line to come on the inside of Shane Parker and Matty Furian. Passed them both at once there, Tony. Well, with a lap to go, if it stays like this, Oxford are assured of victory here. Martin Dugard and Steve Johnson. Johnson almost cutting across Dugard there, like Mark Laram did, and now losing out in terms of placings, perhaps to Shane Parker, but what a ride by Martin Dugard in red, second place in blue, his teammate and partner Steve Johnson, third in yellow is Shane Parker, 
That's a 5-1 to Oxford. It makes absolutely certain they win the meeting. They lead by 45 points to 26. A tremendous ride by that man, Martin Dugard. Four rides, four wins. He may be a guest for Eastbourne, but he's a very popular visitor here tonight to Sandy Lane. Well, I was certainly wrong about the starts because it was the Peterborough pair that made the start from the inside off gate one. Used to his full advantage, Shane Parker, a great start leading it. But already Martin Dugard's moved up to second place. Martin rides very, very tight round the pits bend here. Just looking for that grip that Mark Loran was looking at earlier. Shane Parker didn't know he was coming there, the quick line's the outside, but Martin riding so tight like he does round his own track of Eastbourne, but Steve Johnson now's moved up into third place. He's already got Shane Parker in his sights, and here Steve Johnston again comes out of the corner, very, very tight, down low, gets the grip that's right down on that curb edge, and uh, just gets to the pitch turn ahead of uh, Shane Parker, and then goes for the 5-1 with his teammate Martin Dugard, and that was a 5-1 for Oxford. Well, Oxford going very, very well. Their biggest win of the season was by 28 points, 59-31 against Bellevue. And, well, they could go just as bad as that. The lads in the studio have Steve Johnson with them, as you can yeah, see. Yeah, as you can see, Steve Johnson just come in and a big round of applause for him. But those two points that you got, that's enough to seal the match. And that's what you wanted at the start, obviously. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I didn't get out the start real good. And I saw Martin plugging around the inside on the first lap. And I thought, well... Uh, going wider and wider, there's no grip out there at the moment, you're better off to cut back and um, it just seemed to work, you know, I got in a bit of bother down the bottom corner, I did a, went into the corner and straightened yeah. up and I thought I was going to hit Martin's back wheel at one stage. Looked like the same spot that Mark got in exactly. trouble. Exactly, I, I, when I saw him do that I felt for him because he was, he was going around and you're spinning so much and then you hit that bit of grip and your wheel just catches up, yeah. you know what it's like and just it just flies you across the bend. Yeah. Exactly what happened to Mark happened to me, but luckily Martin was a bit further in front and I just went past the back of his think, back wheel. Do you think Shane done you a little bit of a favour? It was almost like Shane was riding too high and he because he, he did leave a bit of room for you yeah, as you come off that corner. Normally here you would ride that high to try and pass someone and get yeah. more speed. But the last couple of meetings, the dirt's been very... Um, it's not holding together. When you get into it, it doesn't bite. Like you just powder. Ride, it's powder. You ride yeah. straight through it. You don't get any grip. Right. And I think maybe he was doing what you'd think to do naturally is chase the dirt, but there's no dirt there. You're better off cutting back and coming underneath. That's how the track's riding for the last couple well, of weeks. It was nice so. to come away with a 5-1, particularly coming out of gate four. Yeah, it was good. It's uh, it's always my bogey. Every time I look at gate four, <laughs> I try not to tell myself, but I'm thinking, no way. So um, it was nice. And, John, the overall result, as we mentioned earlier, we're obviously going to the, to the rematch of this in a couple of weeks' time, so we'll see you there. But you've got a lead now. At the beginning of the night, I don't think you would have predicted it. Certainly... Uh, this man here didn't. He, uh, he only had you by four, four, four points. I think he's lost his Thank money. Thank you very much. There was no need to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good league, but still we can't get pretty, uh, can't get too confident because we've been to Peterborough before in a couple of seasons yeah. gone past, and they've absolutely hammered us. They're very strong at home, so um, you know we need all the points we can get to take sure. there, and it's nice to have won tonight. And yeah. Keep, keep going thing, for the league, I keep, hope. Exactly, Fingers keep the whole crossed. thing moving on. And it's a long way away. People keep saying to me, you've won the league, you're going to win the league. No, they who's, do. Who's, who's, who's going to be your People biggest like problem? People like us, we jump yeah, on we the bandwagon. All the time. You know, you've done it, it's all over. I told you you could <laughs> do it. Who do you see as your biggest problem now? Who's, um, who's riding as well as you've seen? Paul, Paul are going pretty well at the moment. Yeah. Um, but you beat them. Yeah, we did, but they can beat us. Mm -hmm. they, we, we, we beat them at Poole and they beat us here at Oxford. Yeah, in, in, which is significant, isn't it? Yeah, so um, they're going good. The whole thing at the moment, we've had a real bad run of people getting injured. It's terrible. You know how many guys are out sure, that we're yeah. racing against at the moment. And um, a lot of teams are struggling without full teams. We've, we've got a guy out at the moment as well, but yeah. it's worked out that we can have some pretty good guests for him because he was going so well when he got injured. So, uh, Listen, John, before you go, I don't want to look at his bets because he didn't do very well. Let's take a look at the betting for Heat 13. I'll let you take a bet. What are your thoughts? Lee Adams, Mark Laram, Brian Anderson, Ryan Sullivan. Well, I don't even understand it. So. I, don't know, I, I don't understand it, but I've seen how Lee's been going here lately, and I'll, I'll go with him. Well, you're going to say you can't bet wrong against Lee Adams. Fair enough. We'll let you get back and watch it. No worries. Thanks. So that is the betting odds. Will Mark Laram make amends, or will Lee Adams head towards that maximum, which will let it take him, obviously, to try and lead those averages? Let's join Peter and Tony to pick up the action one more. Well, looking at the betting, I'm not quite sure it's quite shaded in front of in the way of the bookmakers as it usually is, but never mind. That's Brian Anderson in red, already up at tapes, the big guns, four heat leaders here. Gate two, Ron Sullivan goes for Peterborough in white. Gate three, it's Lee Adams looking for a maximum that will take him to the top of the British Elite League averages. He goes for gate three, already three wins out of three for him. On the outside, world champion Mark Aram, one of only two heat winners. He and Ron Sullivan are the only men to have ridden a heat victory for Peterborough.
Lee Adams, for my money here, Peter. Yeah, I've got to go the same way, really. I mean, the way Lee can make starts, he's just such a complete rider, so good when he's out in front, but he's also so good when he's on the starting gate. He can come from behind, he's got just about everything. We saw him finish third in the Danish Grand Prix two weeks ago. That was his best ever Grand Prix result. He's on the crest of a wave at the moment, and he's unbeaten tonight, Tony, so I've got to go for him. Well, remember, in this heat, four heat leaders, four Grand Prix riders, and they include, of course, a world champion, Mark Aram, in yellow. That man in blue there is Lee Adams. A great night for him. The background on the outside is Aram in yellow. There we see Brian Anderson in red, the day so unlucky a few years back when uh, shoulder problems dogged his opportunity, perhaps, to finish on the uh, top three or in the top three of the Grand Prix series. And even a victory, he won the British Grand Prix that year. This is heat number 13. Big crowd here at the Oxford Stadium in Sandy Lane. Are they going to be the Elite League champions? Away they go, the man in blue there is Lee Adams once again, but he's taken on by Ron Sullivan. Once again, Laram at the back, but Laram goes by one, goes by two, and now Laram is out in pursuit of Brian Anderson, and Lee Adams is back in third place. He has work to do. Brian Anderson is now being chased. Are we seeing vintage Mark Laram? Round the outside goes our world champion, coming through on the inside, and now, amazingly, Adams relegated to last place, and Laram putting the pressure on up front. Yes, a big mistake for me to discount the world champion, Mark Laram. He was on the outside start position. We know he likes to come from the outside position. He's got all the outside of the circuit to go for, but I don't think he's going to catch Brian Adams, Brian Anderson. <laughs> Well, he's got just over a lap to do so, and it won't be for want of trying for Mark Laram. In front is Brian Anderson, the Dane. Mark Laram in second place. He will pick up the grip as he comes out of this bend. He's still got work to do. All on the final bend. Could we see a spectacular finish? Brian Anderson is looking safe and sure, though, and Brian Anderson takes it in red. Mark Laram packs in the second place in yellow. In third place in white, his teammate and partner, Ron Sullivan. And the eclipse of Lee Adams, absolutely astounding in that one. We all suggested that Lee Adams would win that heat. He certainly couldn't do so. And well, Mark Laram in second place had to give best to the Flying Dane out front, Brian Anderson, whose Oxford fans are giving him some splendid cheers. And the arm waving there from Brian Anderson shows he knows who's won tonight. And I wonder if he believes that is the key, perhaps, to Oxford winning the Elite League title. Heat number 13, Brian Anderson, the winner. His first heat win of the night. Ahead of Mark Laram and Ron Sullivan, the Peter preparing for a split of the points at three all. Nevertheless, Oxford still in front. 48 points to 29 to 30. Well, off the start, Brian Anderson was the man. Gate one again, working so good. We saw Brian, actually spoke to Brian before the meeting, and he's still riding, you know, with a collarbone that's separated. It moves up and down when he moves his shoulder, so he's riding in pain. But uh, also, Mark Laram was trying everything to get round him, but the thing was, on the outside of the circuit, the dirt that normally works so good for Mark, like Steve Johnson said, it's a little bit powdery out wide. There's not enough dirt in there, not enough grip in there for Mark. Mark kept trying that outside. We know he liked. We know he likes to run on the outside as much as possible, but he couldn't get enough grip from that. Although he was only a bike length behind by the finish, but Brian Anderson kept his cool to keep the world champion at bay. And Mark tried for four laps, but uh, again, the man of the moment was Brian Adam. Brian Anderson. Well, certainly Brian Anderson enjoying that. The action in the pits as we move into the final two heats of the night. The result is determined with 48-30, the margin at the moment, an 18-point lead for the home team Oxford. They certainly in charge and certainly perhaps have made a big step towards that elite league title here tonight as we move on to the final two heats. Remember, a couple of weeks' time, the return, the bonus point will be up for grabs, and that's done on aggregate points. Pool 40, Coventry 38, 13 heats, two to go, a grandstand finish in prospect down there at Wimborne Road. And that final heat, heat 15, the big guns will be out. That should be something down there. Back here, though, it's Sandy Lane, the Oxford Stadium. Hectic activity in the pits. The uh, stadium here, brilliant stadium these days, that go-kart track in the middle, pretty popular among uh, local fans and uh, dog racing here this afternoon as well. We move on now to heat number 14.
Coming out in red there, that's uh, Alice Dribble. Young man who didn't start the meeting too well, but certainly came back with a vengeance in his last ride. The man in white there is Shane Parker, we saw as a tactical substitute last time out. That's the lineup. Shane Parker for Peterborough goes in white from the inside. Gate two for Oxford, Andrew Appleton. Their reserve has impressed so much recently. David Howe returns to track action here. The 19-year-old yet to score here this evening and dropped from his last ride. And on the outside, that is Alice Trimble in red. Second swings they may be, Peter, but keen enough. Yeah, I think so. It's a bit surprising there. Uh, on the inside there, in the yellow there, that's David Howe. Not having the best of nights, really, but... Uh, you can see that uh, Alice Dremel on the outside, he also not having the best of nights. There in the white helmet, Shane Parker, always been in the thick of things here, and we've had a great night speedway, even though the score's been a little bit uh, one-sided. Well, David Howe in a couple of weeks' time, the World Under 21 Championship on his own track at Peterborough. And, well, he'll be favoured by the track, Peter, but is he good enough? Well, with it being his home track, he's definitely in with a big chance, but uh, whether he can win it, that's up to David. Heat 14, the Vidal's been at peak here tonight. Oh, nearly hitting the tapes and then getting stuck. David Howes, he pulled himself back. An unsatisfactory start. The referee appears to have ruled on go the red lights. David Howe did not strike the tapes, but our referee, Jim Lawrence, has put all four riders back in. He says it was unsatisfactory. I think David Howe tried to get a jump on the tapes, so I think we can see it. Perhaps again to see what David Howe actually did beat him. Yeah, David's not scored a point. There he is in the yellow. He moved before the tapes went. He didn't touch the tape. If he had have done, he would have been excluded, but the referee has brought them all back to restart that race with four, four riders. And uh, David was lucky there because he could have so easily been excluded from the restart and, um, you know, could have been finished for the night. But he gets another chance, so he really needs to just cool it a little bit, drop that clutch at the right moment just as those tapes go up. Well, timing is of the essence at the starting tapes. And... Uh, we see it in so many other sports. You see the sprinters in those World Athletic Championships. You've got to get away just right. You don't want a full start. Yeah, well, first of all, when the riders are up to the tape, the start marshal brings them. When they're all settled, the referee will put the green light on. The referee, the riders are all looking to over to the right, to that green light. But when that green light comes on, it really is a tense time because you've only got two or three seconds at the most before the tapes will go and you know that green light quite often fires you up and it's so hard just to concentrate on watching those tapes well those four riders can concentrate again now for the restart of heat 14 away goes our starting marshal this time up by the tapes of world life first start and andrew appleton in blue in gate two and a great chance there but the man in white shane parker hucked the white line stole the march and away he is down that back straight his teammate and partner David Howe is with him and this could be a 5-1 for the first time tonight in favour of Peterborough and I wonder what might have been Peter yeah much better for Peterborough Shane Parker made a clean start was out in front but David Howe was caught up in the traffic there but David just kept his cool went between the uh, the two Oxford riders and now it looks as though Peterborough are going to get their first 5-1 well, it would certainly help the Peterborough cause in the return for the bonus point in a fortnight's time at the East of England showground, because here it's going to be a 5-1, it looks, in heat 14 to the visitors from Peterborough with one lap to go. It's Shane Parker, the Aussie, from Semaphore Park in Adelaide. In second place, it's David Howe, the lad from Leicester, who rides for Peterborough. Back in third is Alice Dremel, the Czech Republic rider. Tail off of the rear is Andrew Appleton. The checkered flag beckons, and the rider in white is uh, Shane Parker winning that ahead of, in uh, yellow, his teammate and partner, David Howe. Third place in red going to Alice Trimble. Five points to one to Peterborough. And that means that uh, the home team Oxford won't have their biggest win for some while. It's 49-35 now in favour of the home team Oxford. The gap was closed slightly, and the credit is due to that man there, Shane Parker, who uh, has hit form perhaps a little bit late, but no doubt he'll be delighted with a very impressive heat victory in heat 14, ahead of his teammate and partner, David Howe, and his Dremel from Oxford in third place. And a bit of fun going on the centre green. <laughs> and, uh, well, what's he doing there, Peter? We've got a burnout here, Tony, that's a burnout. Very popular on the road race circuit, and uh, Shane Parker looks as though he's very pleased to win that race, but uh, I'm pretty sure his back tyre will be shredded. But uh, off the starting gate, again off gate one, look at Shane Parker, completely on his own there on the first turn. But on the outside, the racing here was going on with David Howe, 
kept his cool here, became the meat in the sandwich there, almost, just manages to squeeze past the Oxford pair, pushes Andrew Appleton a little bit wide there on the pitch turn, but from here on, really, David Howe got it all right and opened his score chart tonight. Not had the best of nights, really, but here on his third ride, he's got in a paid win behind his teammate, Shane Parker, and I'm sure he'll feel much better about this when he's driving home tonight, Tony. Well, they have to make their nominations for Heat 15 and toss the coin. Our team managers are in the studio with Jonathan and Kelvin. Yeah, they're right here, and they're just arguing about who's got the coins or not. So there's ever the competitive spirit going on. But uh, first of all, Colin, Meredith, uh, what a great right night it's been, and what a great season so far it's been for you. Yeah, we've, we've, we've performed ever so well, and, and oh man away. And it's it's what the team was built on, a good leader in Lee Adams, and we just benefited from there. Now, Lee wouldn't give his himself all the credit because it has been a team effort and that is what the point is consistency over the year exactly this is what we need everybody's scoring and we've done extremely well haven't we you've got some big matches to go there coventry away and at home yes we've got two only only two more home matches seven more away so that now is... that's a very significant factor yeah, but uh, i think we can still c continue the way we're going and, and we can do it phil wing yeah obviously not an easy night uh, it kind of went downhill after mark came together with nigel didn't it yeah i'm afraid it did but uh, we've enjoyed ourselves and hopefully the racing doesn't quite reflect the results uh, so far i think the lads have pushed them all the way and good luck and credit to oxford and i really hope they go on and win the title now your guys have uh, won a title a couple of years ago do you see these guys going all the way now i certainly do i think colin's right though uh, with a, a long running of away matches you've just got to keep it tight but i think if he puts a couple on the road then i think yeah they'll go away and get the to trophy all right let's do all that right. all important coin toss and we'll good let you fill Phil. Cool. Okay, Claire, Naomi and Sue say heads. And heads it is, Phil. Okay, we'll take one and three, please. And who are you going with? I'm going with Ryan and Mark, and it'll be Mark off one, Ryan off three. All right, and how do you feel about that? Uh, oh, two and well, four, obviously, yeah. on that, but there yeah. you go. Give them a chance, don't we? And we'll go with Lee Adams and Steve Johnson. Lee Adams in red. All right, fair enough. Okay, gentlemen, best of luck, and uh, shake your hands there. Thanks well so done, a good match, and uh, great racing by well uh, both boys. teams. Um, no big surprises there, I suppose. Ryan's right riding well. Good to see Mark in the final, obviously, and Lee coming back because Lee, on, on for a maximum, ended up fourth in that last one. So we've yeah. obviously done him in by coming into the studio. Right? Yeah, the bubble burst there for Lee, but uh, he's ridden superbly without that last reserve. But the only mild surprise, I would say, is that Steve Johnson at reserve making yeah. heat 15. But he's riding well. And he maybe you need some confidence for Intercontinental. Well, I was going to say, you know, Steve said that he was feeling a little bit 50-50 about his Intercontinental performance. I actually think he's riding very well. I actually rode against him in Lonigo when he won the big open mm. meeting down there. He's ridden superbly tonight. I can't see any reason why he can't go on and qualify through uh, to the GP Challenge. Significant news, though. Paul have beaten Coventry now. I can confirm that. Right. And we perhaps didn't expect that at the beginning of the evening. And you just heard Colin talking about the fact that Oxford have got seven away matches. Yep. Coventry including in that, of course. But mm. uh, Paul probably looking like their closest rivals at the moment. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, on paper they do, and probably, probably they're in second place in the league, but they have actually raced a lot more matches than Coventry. Have I missed anybody? Is Ipswich still in? I don't think so. I think Ipswich are probably just a little bit too far out of it, but I think Coventry, if they can beat Oxford home and away, yeah. but I think any team behind Oxford at the moment are going to need Oxford to go on a two or three winning, a losing streak. Well, they rather. begin that they begin that away streak tomorrow, yeah. of course, against Ipswich. So and Ipswich, you know, looking for confidence there. I think the other teams are going to need a bit of ha a help from Oxford themselves if they're going to have a chance of winning this league because, you know, they're in a very strong position as we speak now. They've won tonight. I think if they win tomorrow, I think it's, it's very, very tough for the other teams to come back into it. But if Oxford run into a bit of trouble, they get a few injuries and they, they lose away from home a few times and somebody like Coventry comes back on form, they're going well. There is a slim chance, but uh, a slim one, I think. You said it at the beginning of the evening. The whole thing with Oxford is that they are strong all the way through. Sure. Jono is a reserve, and yet he's the man riding Heat 15. Sure. He's the man that the team manager is confident enough to put in that last final heat. I know they've won it, sure. but the point is that's how strong they are throughout the ranks. Exactly. We saw that in Heat 8 when they, uh, you know, Peter Berg did a tactical substitute with their number one rider, Ryan Sullivan, coming in, and Steve Johnson went out and won the race. So. You know, that's the sort of thing, you know, the away team can't legislate for, you know, and uh, I think that we are seeing a, a superb team unit. Uh, I think Lee Adams is a crucial factor that Colin said. He is a great leader, and I think he's inspired the rest of his troops. Well, tonight it was a battle of the fast cats, the Cheetahs and the Panthers, and the Cheetahs came out on top by a country mile, it has to be said. They're going into heat 15 right now. 
And let's hope it's been as close as the racing as we've seen throughout the evening, because it has been great. Despite the score, it's been some great racing, hasn't it? Sure, it has. And uh, Mark, we saw again in the Heat 13, tried ever so hard to try and pass uh, Brian Anderson, all but did it. But uh, I think Lee Adams in this race, he'll want to bounce back from that last place in Heat 13. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see a, a real strong effort from him in here. Heat 15 here at Sandy Lane. Let's get down to the action once again with Peter Collins and Tony Millard. Yes, in Heat 15, as the lad said, Steve Johnson chosen to go alongside Lee Adams. Of course, Martin Duvard might have been on form, but he was a guest. They've given it to one of their own riders. Mark Laram goes for Peterborough on the inside in white. Gate two is Lee Adams. Three straight heat victories in the last place. Sport his maximum opportunity. Ryan Sullivan for Peterborough in yellow from gate three. And Steve Johnson, the Oxford captain and reserve, who so far tonight has scored eight points, played ten from his four riders. Quite an effort for the reserve here. It goes in Vastavik at the weekend in the Intercontinental Final from which the top six make the Grand Prix challenge. John, I make it there, Peter? Well, he'll be trying his best, there's no doubt about it, because uh, he's certainly capable of going through. There he is in the blue, his goggles are steaming up, he's just clearing the, uh, the mist off those goggles there. He'll go back to that start position, but... Uh, you know, he's capable of doing anything, Jono. He's such a, a character. He can win, he can beat the best riders, and he's got a great chance of qualifying for the uh, overseas, uh, from the overseas final. Well, it's got very steamy here at the Oxford Stadium now, and that's why the riders are turning around. They're getting a little bit of condensation underneath their visors and on their goggles there. So we're going to get underway now with Heat 15, the last race of the night, 49-35, the scoreline in favour of Oxford. Riders line up, our Starling Marshall looks across the line, up he goes, the referee gets his hand on the button, up by the tapes and away they go, and the man in red, Lee Adams it is, hugs the white line as he comes across from gate two, in second place it's Mark Laram chasing Adams, not for the first time tonight, back in third it's Ron Sullivan for Peterborough, tail off at the rear, here's Steve Johnston, but now the chase is on, Adams out front is in front, Laram in second place, and Laram going wide, Adams going close. Yeah, I like to say the still grip low down on the circuit, Lee Adams is riding pretty tight round the inside, really. Mark Laram again, he's riding the outside, but we almost lost Ryan Sullivan there. Steve Johnson's come alongside him. Got a back off there, though, almost caught him, but uh, again, Ryan Sullivan's in trouble and Johnson goes past. All sorts of things happening at the back end, but out front, it's a tremendous lead for Lee Adams against the world champion, Mark Laram, into the final lap of the night. Lee Adams in the red helmet colours, looks set for his fourth his victory of the night. And take him on to 12 points. Mark Laram, who's managed just to one heat win all night, again is going to have to take second place in white for Peterborough. Third in blue, it's Steve Johnson who's got there ahead of Ron Sullivan, who finished in last place in yellow for the visitors. A four point to two heat margin, which means that Oxford have won by 53 points to 37. A tremendous win in the end. Lee Adams, fourth of the night. The league victory in total, a team victory by 53 points to 35, in, uh, 37 in favour of Oxford. So a great win. Oxford beating Peterborough, 53 37, heat 15, or one by that man there in red, Lee Adams ahead of Mark Laram. Steve Johnson, a 4-2 to Oxford to complete the evening, a magnificent evening for the Cheaters. So another brilliant win for Oxford, and in terms of the league table, there you see it, 47 points they have, looking great. Poole took a win over Coventry, they look good. Peterborough still on five, or in fifth position, obviously. And don't forget, we will be in action next time as we see Eastbourne against Bellevue. Sky Sports Extra that one. We'll see you at 7.30. Until next week, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you.